the teams matching up here that also kind of felt destined to get here. Con Esports A versus Elysium Don. And they're already firing through the draft, so I don't really have much time to talk about introducing these two lovely color casters we're going to have on the TriCast here, Bonfire and Gofarino. But right out the gate, Bonfire, looking at this draft we've got going here, and a lot of mid lane prio from Con Esports. Yeah, I, a lot of bands that I think you would expect to see. Uh, some ones that maybe you weren't expecting to see, like the Melio. But that first pick is not surprising at all. I feel like Cassante, even with the nerfs, still a very, very strong B1 pick. And uh, really blindable into any top lane. Just a second. I'm failing with volume on my PC, so it doesn't <laughs> Well, the Vladimir is getting hovered on the other side, which would be certainly a, a unique pick to throw out here. Uh, I, I haven't seen a lot of Vladimir. The Whoa. clock is down, and they're going to lock it in. So I, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be an answer to the Cassante. Uh, it, it certainly can be. Vladimir is one of those kind of mages that you can throw either top or mid lane. A lot more mid lane prio, though. So we'll see exactly where that ends up going for Elysium Dawn. And Rakan will get locked in. That seems a lot more, you know, on par for what we're expecting from the meta. Rakan, one of those best engaged supports currently right now. Yeah, yeah Zaya. No, currently the highest prio support, I believe, at least looking at worlds. So, like you said here, uh, not too surprised to see that locked in. But it doesn't really tell us where the Vladimir is going, which is definitely the big question mark for us. <laughs> since it has been a hot minute since we've seen it. Wow, yeah. that's gonna be uh it's gonna be an Udyr pick right there. Very, very interesting response, especially with a lot of really strong junglers up right now. Um, Jarvan, the Wukong uh, still available. Um, Sejuani, Maokai, all unbanned, but uh, they like their tech with the Udyr right here. Yeah, they certainly do. They want to lean towards that. And that's going to be a jungle pick, obviously. I mean, I know Udyr can get thrown top a lot, but you have the Cassandra already out of the way. The Ash is also one of those champions that now that we're kind of on the post-world patch, this is where you get into the murky area where you can't really always compare what, you know, you're seeing at Worlds versus what you're looking at now because we've gotten a couple patches through. Ash is one of those champions I feel like we're looking at in that back to kind of that role we might have saw at the start of 2023 where, yes, you can pick her AD, but you can also run her at support if you'd like to. Uh, there's a lot of options with her down towards the bottom lane. So Connie Sports A looking to throw some versatility into their draft so far. And Elysium Dawn, they're going to really hammer home regardless where the Vladimir is going, at least some later game scaling Vladimir can really get up and do a lot of damage beyond Menace in those team fights, and we know exactly how Zeri fits into that category in the attack damage side. Yeah, I'm curious what Elysium is going to log in here, though, to finish off this comp, because you do have these two really strong damage carries here in the Zeri and Vlad, like you mentioned, but you're definitely going to want something else to start off the fight here, not just the Rakan, and also a bit of fear probably for them. I'm guessing Elysium is going to be going for these huge team fights, so I'm expecting R4 we're going to see something with a big button to just start off fights. Yeah, I, I really think Elysium, I normally don't say it, but I, I think they would benefit from a Nocturne or a Wukong, even a Jarvan, as that's going to be banned out. Just very, very strong engaged tool, someone who, you know, throws caution to the wind and is willing to start those fights. And on the other side of things, I'm glad you brought out the support Ash because I think this is a really difficult Ash angle into a Zeri Vladimir. It does feel like uh, you are going to get chunked out. So I'd like to see it go support, you know, just become uh, an arrow bot uh, and then late game, you know, get the vision and try to get that initial engage with the arrow. So I feel like if you have an AD carry Ash into a Zeri Vladimir um, into the late game, you're really going to struggle pushing out all of your damage because realistically you miss step once and that's just your entire health bar gone. And there are arguably the two best AD carries right now to throw with Ash still available. They will be on this this turn here. If you want to throw the Caitlyn alongside the Ash for that aggressive bottom lane, Varus has also seen an uptick in play with his usual poke lethality build. Those two are AD carries that if you're going to go the support Ash route, I would say work really well alongside her. And those are still up there for Connie Sports here if they'd like it. There's also some big power plays up for this, you know, top lane pick. If you are bringing the Vladimir mid as Elysium Dawn, there's a couple of good answers to that Cassante. I wouldn't really like the Rumble because you already have a lot of AP. The Amumu locking in for the jungle for some extra CC. Still leaving up that R5 Pryo for the counter pick I'm expecting onto this Cassante. The Amumu does pair insanely well with the Vladimir here. I am just a little bit worried because you are going into the Udyr who... 
is a very fast early clear and great early skirmisher. We all know Amumu League of Legends does not have the best first clear, can definitely be bullied out in the early game here, but it looks like Elysium kind of got the message here and really looking to go for these team fights. Whoa! Locked in. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's the same idea as what you were bringing up about having a pushing bot lane with double range. Timer's going to ensure that this Rakan and this area are going to be constantly pushed under tower. And you'd imagine this Udyr is going to fight skirmish bot quite heavily, prioritize those early dragons with the push of the bot lane. Um, but I'm going to go back to my previous point. If you're this Ash and also to an extent this Heimerdinger late game, just get popped, man. If you get hit by Rakan or a Mumu CC, uh, Zeri and Vladimir are just going to feast on you. So, little nervous there, but the hope is that you are able to snowball a lead so heavily that it will not matter. Yeah, uh, Khan Ooh. Esports are now really laying... They're solely relying on Sunscorched here to uh, to be all the AD damage. Like, Ooh, quite literally all of it. Um, which is really scary. The Yone is the hover on the R5. So, that... You know, actually, I still don't know if we know for sure which one of those two is going top. I know Yone's Holebreaker build is still kind of a thing if you want to try and match up topside. I, I would still rather go the Vladimir for lane because I think Yone, you could get into Slippery Slope where you'll be punished against the Cassante a lot. Uh, but it's still a bit of a mystery. Once we get to the client side draft, I'm sure we'll figure out much more. But yeah, like you mentioned, Bonfire... <laughs> Unless you've got a big lead early as Khan Esports, eh? I don't know how you survive a team fight up against Elysium Don. Yeah, I, I think that that's where really, they're really going to struggle. And uh, I do think, though, it's their, it's their downfall, but it's also their strength, right? Because they don't want to get to that late game. They don't want to see a late game Vladimir. They don't want to see a late game Zeri, a three-item Yone. They really just want to get such a lead that they can take these early objectives. You'd imagine they want a dragon stack like I was talking about. Um, this Silas does have some good team fighting ultimates to steal. The Yone ult, the Amumu ult, both very strong. And so I think that they just want these kind of weird 3v3, 4v4 skirmishes um, rather than the big 5v5 team fights at the 35 minute mark. They also have a really good pick composition with an Ash Heimerdinger. Um, to just, you know, find somebody, maybe a Zeri, maybe a Rakan, somebody on the weaker side, and just pick them off and, and you know, get an advantage that way. So it's not all doom and gloom, um, but if it does go late, Elysium really should ha have a pretty clear win condition. I'm also wondering, maybe Khan looks to play the one 3 one game here, because Ashheimer will do a fairly solid job of holding lane, and you do have strong soul laners here with the Cassante, with the uh, Silas, so... You could look to play that angle here, and that would help you force skirmishes against the super 5v5 comp from Elysium. Um, that does open up the possibility, though, if you do that 1-3-1 one, one composition, that the three people in mid are just going to get absolutely bum-rushed by the five members of Elysium. So always got to play around that, and yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, that is certainly a slippery. It's a harder comp to play as well. Everybody knows how to play a, f a team fighting comp, right? Usually most of the time. It, it's not. It's pretty straightforward, all right? We're we're just going to chain ultimates together and fight and hold things go well. 1-3-1 one, one becomes tricky. That's where you really up the macro game here. And like you mentioned, though, to kind of, you know, jump off your point here, go for, you know, it's not like the Elysium Dawn's comp doesn't have a ton of gap closing for their CC, right? Like you have bandage toss are obviously you're going to have flashes on all the, on the Mumu. Yone obviously can go into a spirit form and then he's got say fate sealed. They can jump all the way across onto those carries. Rakan is really good at getting onto carries as well. There's a lot of great gap closers for honestly, every single champion on Elysium Dawn, given the scenario. So even if you are, you know, playing that three man front in, in the mid lane, you're gonna have to be extra careful because there are ways to get over walls. There are ways to get Gap close. Uh, yeah, I, I am very worried for, for Khan Esports if they are not coming at, you know, at 50 minutes, if they don't have a significant gold lead in my mind. Yeah, I mean, I do think that they have angles where they can, you know, work something back because Vladimir early isn't super strong. If they're even at 20 minutes, they can still try to skirmish and again, go for those picks with the Ash Heimerdinger. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think you're right. You know, when it comes down to it, if Elysium even gets one dragon, I, I do think that Khan starts to slow down with that initial push. And they want to force Elysium into these objectives, throw Cassante or a Silas in a solo lane and get their gold that way. And uh, yeah, so I, I think there are concerns, but uh, as a whole, I mean, we'll have to see. This is, uh, you know, the, the number one team we're talking about. They have five players in the top 20 uh, by, by the rating system. 
for this league. So very, very strong team. It's just interesting to see if they scrim something like this because, you know, you put it perfectly. You don't really think about this type of play often. It's normally the engage compositions, the disengages, the side landing, that one, you know, all that. It's a little bit more nuanced here with this squad. That's certainly a lot more nuance going in here. And there, there is the point worth bringing up that I, I think the Silas pick, while I'm not the biggest fan of slamming an AP mid laner when you have a Heimerdinger and an Udyr uh, and your only AD damage source is an Ash. Uh, Silas does have a ton of amazing ultimates to steal here. If you are, you know, if you are Potato Senpai, uh, you've got, I mean, Every single one of these ultimates, except maybe Lightning Crash, is going to be useful. The Vladimir ultimate's not the greatest one either, but, you know, you're able to steal Fate Sealed. You have a Mumu ult to steal, Rakan ult to steal. Hijacking ultimates is always a great way to disrupt team fighting. And besides splitting up a five-man five comp that's really good at team fighting, just, you know, catching them out and disrupting their ult chain is also a way to win. So I I'm going to look to see if Protato Senpai specifically can bring some sort of lead out of lane and then create problems in fights. Because regardless how they want to play the game, how split they want to play, you got to fight in League of Legends regardless. Unless you play the super macro games where you just kind of dance around them and split push. I've seen a few True. of those. The LCK? LCK yeah, yeah. Yes, LCK, the veg, the veg oh, league. It's so boring. <laughs> I want to yeah. see fighting. I want to see battling. If there's not 10 kills in the first two minutes, I'll fall asleep. No, I'm just kidding. I, the LCK, look, man, they've got the prestige for a reason. But uh, I think I don't think either of these squads want that to happen. Maybe Elysium, but I, I still think they want to keep the lead fairly even. So we'll have to see. We certainly will have to see how it all comes together here. An intriguing game one draft with some unique champion picks, some throwbacks to earlier metas, especially in the bottom lane for Khan Esports. But like Bonfire said, they were the number one seed coming out of the regular season for a reason at six and one. Elysium Dawn also coming into this grand finals, sweeping their competition away. So not an easy task for either one of these squads, but you'll make it easier if you start game one off with the right foot forward. We're going to step right into an intermission and on the other side, hit Summoner's Rift for the start of the Blue Otter Diamond League Grand Finals. Stick right with us.
one, you're live. And just in a flash, we are live from Sumner's Rift Deer game number one at Con Esports A on your blue side with an intriguing draft by our regard and Elysium Dawn coming in on oh. the red side in level one. Already looking for some shenanigans, but Waffle, good ward. He's going to get it cleared by uh, Yarg, but at least spots everybody out. And it makes sense, right? Bonfire, Connie Sports, hey, they want to play hard in the early game. So why not try some level one shenanigans? Yeah, I think they've got a pretty decent early game as well. So it makes sense that Udyr damage goes crazy if you're able to land it. But uh, there always is the counter punch. You know, once you get spotted out, it does mean that the wards are going to come across and if you look in the bot and the top side, that is two red wards. So no matter where this Udyr goes, he is going to be spotted out. He will be known, and uh, they're going to be able to track his clear, which is very, very important. This is still a big win for Khan, though, because the reason why uh, we saw all five of them go bot there is when you have a high Heimerdinger support, you want to get to bot lane ASAP and set up control with your turrets. So in the optimal spot, that's why you'll see a lot of just 5v5 level ones at that brush when there's a Heimer supporting game, because it's like, yeah, we don't want you getting those turrets set up. But the turrets have been set up, and that's going to be a bit of hell here for Idris and Waffle. Amazing gameplay. Yeah, amazing gameplay indeed, right? That's uh, that's the price you're going to pay. I mean, I like the, the decision from Elysium Dawn. Uh, Rakan Zeri is basically saying, all right, you know what? Lane isn't going to matter. Lane is a farm lane for me, unless Jungler shows up. Waffle's waiting to be late game to be, or later in the game to be that, you know, CC brunt set up the fights. I'm actually surprised that Idris didn't even start Cole, to be honest I was with you, about in, to in say this matchup. That. Uh, just because he's just not, not going to be doing anything but farming here. So you can see already the level twos grab first. And yeah, Waffle and Idris are just... I mean, they're just chilling. They're, they're going to be sitting there trying to farm up. These solo lanes is where I, the much more intriguing matchups are landing, as you can already see both Protato and Danny below 50% from just oh. trading. I was, Almost I had was, Yone syndrome. I was literally about to say I'm surprised there was no coal on Idris, but deciding against it uh, might end up, you know, going against it. Might, might end up regretting that, like, because as you see in the bot lane, uh, you know, as we were looking earlier, it's just going to be being shoved under tower the whole time. I mean, that is the reality of a Heimerdinger Ash. Uh, this is the strength that it provides. Late game Heimerdinger, not super useful, but early game Heimerdinger, very, very annoying to have to go against. And mm -hmm. Idris is also a very short range AD carry already. And so, you know, opting against that Cole might be an issue later, being po poked out by the Ash. It's just not a lot's going to be going on as uh, both these junglers going for their clear. Also, look at Furry Little Feet. Has to back early on the Amumu. I believe took too much damage from the camps. It's not yeah. ideal. Yeah, that's Amumu gaming for you. Oh, okay. Ooh, I love that combo from Danny. Utilizing the W shield just to brunt the, the turret shot he's going to take. And he's got Potato on the back. He's going to at least get DP advantage here, I, I would believe, go for it now. Did feed Potato Senpai a uh, first strike proc there, so plus five gold going on over Sir Rizal in the oh. area. Going to pop right. some stances. Nothing, though. Good yep. uh, good pathing there from Danny to keep himself safe here. And, uh, you know, Idris, we talked about the fact he didn't go Cole. Interesting to see that he goes fleet footwork on Zeri. I, I got to think that's also just for the extra move speed to dodge out on the skill shots and, and slow stuns that are going to be thrown his way in this bot lane. Because, you know, I feel like Zeri falls into usually that category of a lethal tempo bot. Yeah, I feel like lethal tempo is the, uh, the, the consistent rune that you see on Zeri. It's just very, very strong. Uh, when you pop the lightning crash, you just shoot a million times and uh, do a ton of damage. And that's where you get the Zeri moment meme, you know, as uh, OPIV should be fine as he backs away from this top lane matchup. It is going to be ranged into melee in the top lane, the top lane. So expect to see a little bit of a CS deficit uh, for Alpha Day as a potato. Going into the Yone field, pretty okay about it. But yeah, expect to see a little bit of a CS disadvantage in the top side and in the bot side the other way around. Mm -hmm. My thing, though, is that uh, Vladimir CSing early kind of sucks because you don't have your Q on a low enough cooldown yet. Uh, that's why level 9 is so important for Vladimir. That's when you have your Q maxed out. That lets you just literally sustain so hard in lane. But it also kind of acts as your last hitting button because uh, Vladimir auto attacks, not the most effective. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
It's interesting, right? You talk about a lot of champions like, oh, we wait for level 16 Kale, level 16 Kassin, you wait for level 11, blah, blah, blah. Most champions wait for the level 11 to get their form. Vladimir, well, I agree with you. Level 9 is, is kind of a big part. You don't always hear that for a lot of champions in League. But so far, OP IV is doing a pretty good job. He's got that CS lead commanding Lee. You've also got Danny, who did actually able to take a back and not have to use his teleport. He now teleports back in with a uh, refillable and a, an extra dagger for himself. So he's got a bit more in that lane. He doesn't have ult here, and Protato wants to fight Danny out here. Steals away the fate sealed, but he's way too low. Ooh. Danny gets the lethal tempo going, so no level six yet for Danny. Now he gets it. Will he look for an angle here with the ultimate Do available? It. Do it. He could. Oh, yeah, Yarg's here. Say, here's Yarg, though. Yeah, this is a good yeah. cover from Yarg right here. I have a good recognition that your you know, mid laner wants to take it back. Low on mana, low on health, and this is another one of the strengths of Heimerdinger. Not the best roaming support, but uh, when you need to hold a wave, there is one little furry scientist, and that's uh, that's Yarg. He's going to help you out. As Danny is that doesn't want to go, doesn't want to go on Yarg right there. I was I was thinking maybe there was a Yona angle, but. We're, we're getting an LCK start here, Slayer and Gordo. This is or Gopher. This is a <laughs> this is a boring start. It's the bench start. Yeah, both teams taking their time. We'll say, which I, again, I think feel like we talked about this probably does favor uh, the side of Elysium. Gone. I think they're pretty happy about this slow start. Yeah, they certainly. You know, they don't even have a CS differential in the bot lane, actually. I mean, Idris is farming right along. He's actually technically ahead of Sunscorched. So, I mean, that's kind of a victory in a lot of ways here. Sure, Yarg might be getting more of the procs on his support item to get that leveled up quicker with the poke he's doing. But outside of that, Idris is going right along with schedule. And we really haven't seen too much jungler impact at all. I do see Sir Rizel is spotting out for a little feat, but just a bit of an invade there. No, no dragons taken, no ganks, just hovers so far. And like you mentioned, Bonfire, that's, that's really going to benefit Elysium Dawn because they're not getting pressured off those neutral objectives where they're going to want to set up first and just be a massive, massive advantage. Yo, let's go. Double Fiendish Codex back. That is the best kind of back, one would say. Uh, no, I, I really I, going on, Vlad. I, I, think you're, I think you're right, Slayer. And I think also another moment of concern, like you were talking about, is it is that jungle prior. I think we were expecting this Udyr to battle it out a, a lot more. And, you know, there were potential dive angles as, uh-oh, it might be on the other foot. Oh, good flash from Waffle. Gets the knockup. But look how low Idris is. He can't come across. Waffle going too far. Very little feet. Does have the ultimate if he wants to curse the sad mummy. And Yarg oh. is too low. Too squishy. He'll fall. Sunscorch does get a trade. But now Idris with the lightning crash starting to free fire. They need to get onto him. The flash from Very little feet gets the double. But Idris pulls turn aggro. Actually gets executed. So Sir Rizel can't pick up that trade. But he's got Very little feet on the wrong side of Summoner's Rift right now. Between two blue sided tier one turrets. Very little feet will just delay. Lay the inevitable, trying to stall out Sir Rizel, who will pick up the shutdown. And finally, we get some action on the board. Ooh. Yeah, we get we get some action, but uh, not a lot of gold differential. Both of these teams going to come out feeling pretty even about that one. I think the big thing is, where did that gold go? The Udyr got one of the kills. Importantly, the Ash did as well. On the other side of things, it was the Amumu getting both of those kills right there. And so... You know, it, it was an even trade in terms of kills. I think one more kill went over with the execution. But I think the gold's in the right place for uh, for this Khan Esports squad. Yeah, nice spread, honestly. And it's got to give him Pryo over this dragon, knowing that Curse of the Sad Mummy is down. Furry, when they don't have that ultimate on up, really does not have the same threat level. So that's going to give him a lot of breathing room here. And just use that to at least get up in the dragons here. Slightly late on the first dragon, but not too late. Dragon is taken nonetheless, and we'll see how the item points come through here. Sir Rizel, I got to think off that back. He got a shutdown on that kill. Uh, he's at least going to get tier two boots here, or pretty close to what I, I, I'm inferring is a demonic embrace for this Udyr. Both of these junglers like to go that demonic embrace for a little bit of their extra AP damage. Sir Rizel still looking to have impact. Catches Danny trying to go forward with that spirit form. Getting tracked. Looks like he's pathing over towards his Rift Herald. He does have top prio because OP Ivy took a back. And yeah, looks like he'll just jump right on it, trying to get both those early objectives. But Furry Little Feet 
does have an idea this is going on. Yeah, yeah. does not have lane prio though. So is spotted out a little bit here. Is going to be stunned up, but mid lane. Oh my god, Danny didn't even need Fate Seal. He gets that kill. Solo Bolo for Protato down. Alpha Day did get the first roam over here, but now it's a two on two. And if they bring OP Ivy over, they have the numbers advantage. They don't have the health bars though. Yeah, yeah OP Ivy. Oh, whoa. whoa. Bot side, what's going on here? The engaged bot whoa, lane doing a lot, but Yarg flashes with the missiles to pick up a trade. And Waffle does not have the damage as Heimer does. He's gonna have to fight his way out. Yarg trying to use his turrets as a defensive position. Waffle gets the knockup oh, though no on oh, no the way. great entrance. The Rakan takes down the Heimer. Holy, but that is the hard part here for Waffle trying to go in. I'll hold that thought all out. Oh, the pool is down for OP Ivy. Mila has to flash away, gets the phase rush proc, but Alpha Day has a billion dashes to cut down. Can't get the empowered Q heal. The Vladimir, not enough of an answer for this Cassante. Mm -hmm. And Whoa. it's not over yet. Oh my god, it keeps going. Protato teleported back in with the fate sealed and has enough to kill off 30 little feet. And finally, this game gets bloody. Yeah, I think the LCK start that we were all kind of hoping against is... Uh, I think we're allowed to think that this is uh, this is an LPL start right here, Slayer. As across the rift, just battling on battling on battling. We've got Supporto Combat in the bot lane, in the top lane. I think Alpha Day did a fantastic job with the last bit of that third proc of the Q. Gets that knockup back and just goes all out. Beautiful kill right there. And then a good trade in the mid lane, or a good kill in the mid lane, I suppose, from Danny, but did not really end up mattering because across the map, it has been all Khan doing a really, really good job of keeping themselves in the game. We, talk, we talked extensively about this composition. They need these kills, and they're getting them in droves right now. Yeah, I mean, a kill for each member here right now, and we are getting some of the first backs, or first big items coming through. Oh, right over the I'll... scuttle here. Danny has a two-level advantage, the Fate Seal to Gap close here. Rizel's going to try and run away, but the Spirit Form, enough of a speed up, the E execution. And Danny has two solo kills to his name now to accelerate this Yone. Yeah, very little feet as well, going to be able to steal away this red buff. Danny... Keeping his team back in this game right now, and you don't want to let this Yone get big. We've talked uh, about how this bot lane is going to struggle against some of the engage and some of the scaling. And Danny is 100% in that camp. Yeah, you have to worry about a Vladimir and a Zeri, but it is difficult to think about anything. But whoa! Ooh, they're going. Oh, they're going. Double charm from Waffle. Really well played to lock down and keep Idri safe. That was clutch. The kill's going over to the carries, but Waffle made sure no trades are coming across with that beautiful quickness. Mm -hmm. Really dicey, though, there. You can see it just due to the fact that uh, you are having to engage into a Heimerdinger that these health bars are falling pretty low. I'll hold that thought. You oh, failed no. to dash over the wall here as Potato. Gonna get knocked up, I think. Oh, but now look at his that. <laughs> There's just chaos. Everyone's still going. OP Ivy trying to run away from the dive. It pops the ghost and the pool, but all out Alpha Day goes. One more dash Whoa. will do it. And then the Tofo strikes, picks it up. That's first turret, a kill in the top side, and Shelly's going to get a crash onto that tier two. I think they can get this tier two as well. They're going to back off because they're seeing the backs from the other side of things, but realistically, that is so much gold going over to this Cassante. And just like, just when it looked like. Danny and Waffle were doing a great job of bringing this game back into a good position. You look at the gold lead, and suddenly it's way back in the favor of this Khan Esports squad. And then you look at who's holding the gold, and yeah, it's going to be that Cassante getting all those tower plates, getting some kills as well. This is going to be a very, Ooh. very strong Cassante to have to deal with. Dark is setting up here. Dragon is up in about 10 seconds, and probably expecting a path on down here but the thing is yarg is now getting pincered here if free paths down this could be an issue does not seem to be the case right now as of course we pan back to mid lane and it was another all in attempt alpha day is now down here so the main advantage for the time being in favor of Connie esports but you also have op ivy here alpha day does not have ultimate no all out available just yet can really nerf a lot of the damage very little feet going in three Big man curse the sad mummy yark is already down stolen away sad curse uh, sad mummy does get traded back the lightning crash danny's fate seal can't find anybody nobody gets the sun scorch he's free firing on this ash and now idris is going to be chased down and killed off con esports have arrived to the grand finals yeah, and that is the skirmishing right there, Slayer, that we were talking about. 
That is exactly the fight that they want right there. And they feast upon it. They said, this is our grand finals to take. What a beautiful, beautiful team fight right there because it looked a little bit dicey, but that Curse of the Sad Mummy did not hit the Ash. And so while they were able to take down Yarg, did not really matter. Danny is sitting on a ward, doesn't realize that Sir Rizel should be oh. able to just pick this one up alongside Protego. Wow. Ooh. And Ivy did not have the Hemo plug there. I'm dreaming about the fact that's still available. Mm -hmm. cool. I don't know you want this one. Oh, oh. I mean, the vision set up right now for COD Esports is giving them so much. And now Furry Little Feet, he's going to go in, but he has no Curse of the Sad Mummy available. That really nursed the Mumu, and he's just going to fall as well. Is this even Elysium Dawn's blue side jungle anymore? Ooh, they are just falling apart right now, Slayer. That's three kills that they give up to a three-man wrecking crew in Yarg, P Protato Senpai, and Sir Rizel. And that's a disaster, right? They did not even have to roam up the Ash. Able to get the entirety of the bot turret right there. All of the CS that comes with it. There goes the mid, mid turret. Danny's going to die. It is a horror. Oh, yeah. All out utilized by Alpha Day just to make sure nothing gets tricky. But my god, what an explosion in game number one now. I mean, everybody on this team except Sunscorch is sporting a bounty. Got to think that this Silas is sitting on a, a crap ton of gold as well when he gets this back going. He has 10 Dark oh Seal stacks. Yeah, look at that. 2,400 gold. You have nearly 3,000 on Sir Rizel who's stealing away camp. So the item the item points that a couple of these champions for Con Sports, Con Esports are at is about oh no. to get OP Ivy. Oh, no. OP Ivy. Oh, I didn't even realize. I mean, there's just no way out. I think he has pool available. He has ghost. He's going to pop it. I think he's going to try and run around the map here. Yeah, Wooter definitely going to chasing Where's down cone? blast cone, but Ryan D. Yarg utilizes the upgraded stun on that Heimerdinger. The turn coming out here from OPI. We try to get some healing. The Knight taking him down, gets the heal from the Hemoplague. But here's Sir Rizel. Yarg no, on a killing spree to get him some extra gold on top of it all. <laughs> and this game is completely collapsing for Elysium Dawn. Yeah, like they really are going to hit the need to hit their team fight phase here ASAP because things are just going so downhill. You got Baron up in a few minutes here, and if you're not able to team fight at this stage, it's gonna be even rougher then. We'll see if they get the shutdown here in bot lane. Yep, quickness stolen away, hijack, good curse of the sad mummy though to make sure it's locked down. There's the real quickness, and they get the shutdown and they get it on to Danny, which is really, really important. Yeah, I feel like Danny has to be the carry this game. The Yone needs to be disrupting in the back line. The question is, what is the trade going to be like? You get the shutdown in the bot lane. That's fantastic. Potentially a bot lane tower as well with the objective bounty. So th th that's great. Don't get me wrong. They are going to give over the second Rift Herald, though, which should be able to get a craft on an inner turret. And they're not even going to be able to get the entirety of this bot tower. And so it's great that they got the shutdown. They need to look for picks, get themselves back in the game. But it is not oh, the huge gold advantage in this Amumu. Might find some friends on the wrong side of things. Oh, and there's yeah, no blast, blast going here oh, either. Yeah. Really well played there from Sir Rizel to cut off the one escape. And for a little feet, got the gold for the red buff, but he ultimately just gives it right back over to Con Esports. And yeah, this is looking rough. The worst part here, OP Ivy. We're at, you know, 19 minutes. I'm sure he'll get it off of back, Gofrino, but oh, no, he's not even without an item. Yeah. That's the Double Fiendish Codex start here. Like, those don't build into a singular item, so you are delaying that. Um, it definitely has to be on this back where you get the Night Harvester since you have all the components, but that is really, really scuffed to say the least. And that is a huge part of your team fighting formula. Yeah, just really, far, on that thing. really far behind right now, Gofarino. And I think the biggest issue as well is you look at the no item, there's also zero Dark Seal stack. So you're not getting any AP off of that. You don't have an item uh, at the moment. I, I just don't think you can fight with this Vladimir. Idris has to be careful, should be okay, able to dodge away from the stun. 
But uh, they're just going to run it down mid right here. They do have a Herald if they want to drop it. Could be a collapse angle. Yep, flank, yeah. TPE. Danny and Furry Little Feet do have Sir Rizel cut off. Cool. Teleport coming from Alpha Day. They're going to have the man advance. They're trying to burn down Sir Rizel. Oh, but Danny's going to go right back into the waiting Alpha Day. Doesn't get the knock up. The arrow, though, will land right on Danny. That's the perfect target to grab. Danny has to flash away. Everyone's trying to run away from this. Cassante. Yard picks up the first Ooh, kill. Ivy Ivy going forward with a lot of low health bars. Gets one shut down. But that's all he's going to get. A trade on the other side for Alpha day killing off the carries furry little feet is the only one left up low health bars but a team fight win nonetheless for connie sports yeah they slapped them down right there and emphatically they did lose two members sure but at the end of the day four for two i think you take that every single day of the week and sundays and they're just going to drop this rift herald pop as well get some more gold in their pockets things are looking pretty darn good for this con esports squad and Ooh. Okay, Flash gets the bandage toss to make sure to secure the kill. So good shutdown. Very little feet. Actually, that's not the, the one champion without a shutdown right now. Kill regardless. Sunscorch is down. But like you mentioned, what are you trading for it? Your base being broken open if you're Elysium Dawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that, there's no more Flash on this immobile as well, critical. Dragon actually being started here by Yard. Oh my god. He's just taking it by himself. He's not even by his turrets. He's just looking out right now. This is all, I did not know that this was some tech right here, by the way, on a Mumu. I didn't know this was possible. Ooh, we might have well, a fight here. Yeah, hold on. I don't know if Elysium Don are going to let this just happen for free. Danny is going to walk into a brush. Good oh double stun goodness. into the sidejack quickness. What a blow up there from the solo lanes for Khan Esports. Danny didn't have a shot in the world to contest it. They won't pick up the dragon. They're not going to find anything unless Sir Rizal overextends. He'll back up, though. And Alpha Day showing off the Cassante tech in droves and potato, potato Senpai looking real comfortable on the Silas. Yeah, oh, it's not over yet. This should just be a bloodbath. Oh, there goes OPIV. Can't get the pool to save him. Idris is free firing with that lightning crash, but a beautiful stun from Yarg. Cleanses uh, the slow, maybe, there at the end point, but Idris will live. Cleanse the Ignite. He cleanse the Ignite. Oh, yeah, the Ignite able to survive I, I suppose but i mean it's slim pickings at this point uh, it, it just i don't know it feels like a deflating loss right now I, they haven't lost yet uh, i want to preface that but it just feels very deflating oh. right now oh as... what a curse the sad mummy interrupts waffles quickness so he gets brunted and nobody else can follow him up sunscorch gets to kill potato's oh, gonna goodness. flash goodness. through the q damage potato senpai putting on a show to kick off the grand finals danny. oh and danny he just can't fight. Homie this can't year. move. Too Dave accelerated. Boy. This guy, this game feels over, boys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of felt over. Yeah. And this is what I was kind of trying to get at as well. Is it just feels like a very deflating game as well. You know, you come out firing. You have this composition where you have some pocket picks, some meta picks, a great team fighting comp. I think we were all very critical of this con esports comp. And we said, you know, if things don't go well for them early. Could be a huge issue. They don't really have a safety net. I feel like a lot of teams will draft a one scaling option or one great team fighting option just in case they do go late. But con esports sticks to their guns and credit to them. They know the way that they want to play this game, and they said, we're just better at team fighting. You know, we will take these skirmishes and just win on that. And uh, I, I feel like if you are this Elysium Dawn squad, you're, you're looking at this and you're thinking, I feel like we like our draft. I don't really know what we go from here. And so it's it's just a tough game one to kind of stumble. It's not going to get any better, at least in the game one. But like you mentioned, looking forward if you can't really execute, execute, you know, a team fight comp, you get punched in the mouth early game. What does the what does the response look like? Do you try to opt for more stronger early game picks? I don't know. Oh. But right now, Sir Rizel, all he really cares about is buffering as much of this Elysium Dawn squad off the Baron. He really can't even afford to walk much forward into their own jungle here. And it feels like they're going to group up and try and make a last ditch effort to stop this Baron. Or they might just give it over. I mean, they don't know this is happening. They have a good idea it's happening. But how do you get into the pit here? Because Furry, if you walk up here, you're going to get all outed, just knocked away, and the Baron's already dead. Like, there's just not much you can do right now as Elysium when you're behind like this. Yeah, uh, this composition is 
really strong when you're on even footing and even if you are behind if you're able to fight for objectives you know with that Amumu alongside the One I think there could be an argument to be made but they are so far behind it really feels like Sir Rizel is unkillable and you have to get through all of those Heimer turrets who by the way has a, a Leandre's and a stopwatch so good luck killing the Heimer and good luck you know t taking all of that poke just a chunk from the uh, from the Udyr as well they're getting led out of this game and as much as I'm sure OP Ivy would love some bleeding right now, I don't think he wants it at his own accord. There's just not a lot that they can do except for watch their Nexus fall. Probably Fur the next five minutes. For a little feet, try to set up a flank here, but he might just get wrapped. Sun Squared spots him out. Yarg oh. going to get the stun over as well. And those two alone could just burn for a little feet. He's going to turn and burn, but he's already dead. Big engage tool down. The Nexus turret's under siege. There's the stolen away. It's the curse of the sad moment. OP Ivy has to go into the pool. All out comes across onto Danny. Good fate oh sealed. My. They got him under oh the my. turret, but they just don't have enough damage. Alphanay's gargoyle stone plate saves him from falling so low on the health bars, but it's not going to end up mattering. Khan Eastwards will just not fall in this game number one, and Alpha oh. Day just going to end it. Doesn't even let Idris get close to his Nexus turrets. OP Ivy going to get one more big heal, but will fall. A big time statement from Khan Esports as they'll take the lead 1 0 in the Diamond League Grand Finals. And it just felt yeah. like Khan were up a step ahead every single point of the way once they hit the mid game point here. Because, I mean, Elysium, they weren't able to get a single objective whatsoever on the map this game. Yeah, it, it was a punch in the mouth to say the least. A 26 men, a 26 minute uh, like beatdown. It, it really felt like there was not a point. You know, a, a good point right there, Gofrino. Once they hit the mid game, it just really felt like they hit their stride, and there wasn't a point afterwards where they just ever felt comfortable taking any fights, taking any engagements. Constantly on the back foot, getting poked out. The engage was better from Khan Esport. Uh, I think sometimes you can point to a certain angle, a certain lane, a, a certain fight that really lost them the game, but. I think this is, you just go into chat at the end of the day and you, you type team diff and you just look towards the next one. Uh, and I think that's all they have to do, right? Just kind of reset their mental, say that wasn't our fight, that wasn't our game. We'll be better next time. And uh, I, I guess just hope that you have a better composition, I suppose. I really don't feel like comp was the issue, though. They're going to have to figure it out. We'll see exactly how this evolves because the nature of best of fives, Gofrino, is that you're gonna you're likely gonna lose some games so you're probably you know you're in a series like this gonna play blue side and red side drafts so i'm curious you gotta think is this elysium dom trying to switch over to the blue side now they have side selection to try out a blue side draft maybe put something together on that side with those prio picks that's what i'm thinking yeah i mean blue side has just been so strong these previous three patches um and i mean it's been a meme at worlds for a reason even though a few changes have happened yeah Get that, snag yourself some OP picks here. I mean, we saw the B1 pick was the Cassante this game. They put in a lot of work for Alpha Day in that top lane because you're able to win all the 1v1s. You got so accelerated thanks to that Herald giving you first turret gold, and then you just end the game 8 1 and 11 and unkillable. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would shout out some score lines here, but it feels like every score line from Khan Esports is just flawless. Uh, Sir Rizel ends up with 23 kill participation and 31 kills, 5, 1, and 18. That's, you know, an underrated one. Protato had some amazing hijacks on that, Silas. We can talk about it for, honestly, a lot longer than we need to here at this point because it's really just game one, right? So the Goldfish memory going to come in here for Lysium Don. This is a squad that, like we mentioned, came in as hot as possible going into this grand finals. They swept their competition last week, actually just six days ago, but now they see themselves down in the series. What does the response look like? We'll help you figure that one out after the intermission when we get to game two draft.
back here for game number two at Diamond League Grand Finals as honestly a lot of amateur leagues coming to a close here and we're looking to close it out climactically. Bonfire though, not much climactic about game number one to be quite honest with you and the viewers. Pretty much a stop here for Con Esports and the immediate switch up from Elysium Don. They are going to take that blue side. Yeah, they're grabbing the blue side. They're going to ban that Udyr. Um, a lot of different ban bans, actually. So the question is, who is the Bud Udyr ban in favor of? Because last time, in the first three bans, they banned out the Melio. They did this time. The Rel and the Orianna. Uh, so it is going to be the Orianna left open. You'd have to imagine Khan have to either respect it and ban the Orianna, um, which would leave open the, 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 the Ari. Or they ban the Ari and uh, they have a counter into the Oriana, but I think we both agree, or I guess all of us, um, you know, this being a TriCast, Oriana, very, very broken right now. Very, very strong mid laner. Yeah. Didn't see her last game, though. So, it was oh. on the table, though. Charm. See what the Pryo is here. So we did see the Cassante Pryo last game. The Maokai being hovered. That's also been a high value pick all right mm, okay so they land on the maokai i like it if you're not gonna be if you're not gonna be able to be one jarvan and you want to go jungle as your angle take the maokai my issue here is if you if that was the plan all along yeah you leave cassante open i mean and oriana uh, that, so yeah oh i mean this my. is an, uh, yeah. an auto slam in arguably the top strongest top laner and mid laner are picked up for Con Esports on red side. Uh, I, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and, and Slayer, the thing is as well, the strength of red side, the reason it's starting to come back into the meta is because you get the counter pick of bot lane. You can pick really any bot lane you want and, and you get to shove in Elysium's bot lane. If you want to go double ranged, if you want to go melee, I mean, you really have dealer's choice, the trade being you give over some power picks, but Elysium kind of gave them the power picks. They, they allowed them the Cassante and the Oriana. Um, so a bit of a question mark there. They do grab themselves the Syndra, trying to see if that could be a potential counter to the Ori. It does decently into the Ori since you can match the scaling um, once you hit the max stack of Splinter's Wrath. And you do have some burst potential, but... Oh, no. Oh. I mean... What? Israel can be pretty decent here. Um, I, I I think uh, I think Bonfire is saying oh no for for purely spiteful reasons towards me. No, I just hate Ezreal in this current meta. I, I think that he oh, is a God. I think he's a trap pick. I think that like people see Ezreal do these crazy outplays and get poke, and they think oh Ezreal is going to be good. I'd like an Ezreal, and then they play Ezreal and they do no damage in the team fights, and so. Um, not a huge Ezreal slammer here. I think this, yeah, this opens up a good Ash lane. The one strength that Ezreal possesses, good weak lane AD carry. Uh, you can just kind of put him in the weak side. We'll do okay. You know, we'll spike in the mid game. Can look to poke alongside the Maokai. That is the strength that the Ezreal provides. But I just don't know how you're getting through the armor that Cassante possesses. And that is, I think, where my main concern comes in. Certainly is a fair one. And yet, you can look to punch that in the top lane. I mean, we have seen a lot of into the Cassante, and we'll see if Khan wants to ban that away, because that would give you consistent magic damage into this Cassante and really shrink them. That's what I'm leaning towards here a little. Yeah, I mean, if I'm Khan here, I think this is a, a pretty simple Jax ban. I, I think that Jax, very, very strong top laner, good into Cassante. Um, it will kind of make up for that consistent damage you might lack in an Ezreal pick. Um, also a great, you know, split pusher. Ezreal's a pretty good split pusher. Syndra's a fairly strong split pusher. So I wouldn't mind a Jax ban. The question is, when you get to this level of pro play, not everybody plays everybody. So you kind of have to take that into account that, you know, while somebody might be strong, uh, you know, not everybody plays every champion. And so instead, they're going to ban out what you'd imagine as a pocket pick in this Kindred. But also, you know, it's not a bad consistent AD damage as well. The Kinja ban oh. is sort of feigning that Maokai is not going to be in the jungle. Uh, yeah. It could be a support Maokai. Uh, funnily enough, that is a pairing that Bonfire and I know very well. It's true. It's been a while since I've even seen it really attempted. Nautilus is going to be the hover. You're hovering, you're hovering supports here right now for... Uh, so you're, you're thinking the Maokai is going to go jungle. 
Uh, I mean, any any one of those engagey peel off supports, I think, is, is really good. Thresh is multifaceted. I would rather see an Alistair uh, or a potential, you know, is Renata. Renata is not banned this game in like game number one. I Renata works really well. You can never really go wrong with a Thresh pick, though, in my mind. Go for it, you know. Yeah, it is a little bit of a jack of all trades mixture of that here. So we'll see what sort of value you get out of that here as Elysium. Because you do really want to set up for picks. I will hold my breath here. Um, you do really want to set up for picks on this thresh. You're not going to get the biggest turn value of this game considering the DC is as real. So you're going to look to run around the map, get some plays here since you do have that weak side as real. This could be the top lane graves if they lock it in to go into that Cassante. Um, won't really be able to punch through the Cassante really well in lane, but should have the lane prio and be able to go toe to toe because once you stack quick draw armor it does make it a lot harder for the Cassante to just try and punch the boot. yeah i was seeing i saw the blitzcrank hover and i got really excited because i feel like this is a pretty strong blitzcrank angle against an oriana ash rakan um deciding against it going with the thresh you know a little bit of hedging your bets we'll say uh with this thresh pick i'm i'm iffy on it i don't feel like you need the uh peel for an ezreal but whoa never mind all of my point has been negated because we have a karthus pick um which is very very interesting yeah karthus jungle i think actually kind of the most underrated part of karthus's kit everyone thinks of his ultimate of the death form where you can you know still cast abilities you die a lot um your your e the big wall that slows you it removes like 30 percent magic uh, resist so very very strong when you pair it alongside a hyper scaling ap um because you just throw it on it uh, in a big team fight where everyone just runs through it and then that shot that shockwave does so much more damage so keep an eye open for that as well there's a it's another game once more where con esports are leaning all of their AD damage on to Sunscorch, right? I mean, yeah. Cassante, to be completely honest with you, I, I don't know how much when Cassante goes out, it, 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 I'm assuming it's decently attack damage focused. Um, I think it's so, true damage. True uh, damage. So, regardless, it's not like a pure, Cassante's not a pu pure attack damage answer for a comp, right? So it's once again yeah. Ash that they're really heavily leaning on. And I'm still worried about it. Obviously, the way we saw con esports game one kind of just body it, it didn't wasn't an issue but i'm kind of favoring the least don is just going to go quietly in the night in this grand finals and that will become an issue in closer games in closer fights when you get further in the game and the itemizations come across for some of these tankier members but I do also like leaning towards that comp because you don't have you know you have a graves top and he's all about mat you know armor stacking there's a lot of crossing lines for me in this draft, and that's what happens when you get a Karthus and a Graves to end one. Yeah. Uh, it does make you think there is a small chance that we see... A, yeah, it is going to be the Maokai top, it looks like, judging by client drafts, so... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm just looking to go neutral with the Cassante in lane here, because um, the Maokai, you can just sit at a range with saplings. You will be able to use that for Ample Smash to knock away the Cassante. Um, thing is, the Cassante should still have more than enough damage to 1v1 you for those parts of the game here, and that is a concern. Yeah, this Cassante was a massive problem in game one. I feel like we talked in spades about you know the, the utility and the damage and the all out and the armadillos that he provides. Um, so we'll have to see if it's going to have the same type of impact as we saw in game one. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought it up at the end of the last game, because uh, Slayer, because best of fives are kind of a microchasm of the meta. Um, I remember a little personal story. Me and you were casting, or me and somebody else were casting a best of five, and it was the Swain that suddenly became the hot meta pick of the, day, pick of the night, where everybody wanted the Swain. So it'll be interesting to see if Cassante is that, um, if we're going to see, you know, the Ash kind of start to be fought over, if both of these teams have the same idea on what the meta is, um, if they start to realize like, hey, we're getting shoved in consistently, we need to, you know, switch things up. Um, I think we'll have to keep an eye on this Cassante this game, because in the first game, just kind of a giga stomp on the Vladimir. Um, on the Maokai, I just don't think it's as easy because there's just not as much trading with a Maokai and a Cassante. Maokai can just kind of walk away pretty consistently. 
Um, but if the Cassante can get another lead, I think we have to start having a conversation about Cassante must be pick or ban uh, for the Elysium Dawn squad. I mean, at the top of the tier three level right now, you know, with uh, RCL closing up and ACL going on uh, across all those casts that I'm sure both of us have been able to cover. Cassante has been that game changing yeah. champion pick for a lot of those series and certainly is here once again. We've had another draft where the coach has been cooking. And, you know, speaking okay. of coaches, got to make sure to shout out oh. the sponsor, as always, for Blue Otter yeah. League. Coachify plug. is your BOL Season 10 sponsor. It's a new platform which allows, you know, esports coaches to coach with quite literally, you know, zero commissions. You could sign up for free. Anyone can do it. Bonfire could go do it right now and coach up whoever he wants to. I don't know how that'll go, but he could do it. And, oh. you, can, and you can create a public profile, sign up for free. And if you want more information, because I can't give you all of it right now, just type exclamation point coachify in the chat big shout out to them not only for sponsoring blue otter in my mind but a lot of the tier three league of legends space right now they're, they're doing a really good job helping out helping out the little guys i think i could coach i think that's not fair I'm, i'd be a decent coach that's I, uh, <laughs> that, wow all right 2v1 right here all right maybe maybe you, I won't be a decent you have a 44 percent win rate in ranked whoa i would have told you that in confidence <laughs> all right you know what but we're here to watch actual good players play, not me talk about my silver three woes. Silver two woes. <laughs> oh, good correction. Yeah. Glad you corrected that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I got to I don't want to already start, like, judging the Elysium draft, but I'm curious. You had the, the B5 pick, right? You, you, you had already seen. I, you hadn't seen the Karthus yet, but I just feel like this comp would be a lot better if it was an Orn top in a Maokai jungle. I mean, you're l relying a lot on Syndra and Ezreal to do a lot of damage, but I, I gotta think that's a lot better. I I'm just worried that there's so much magic damage on the side of Khan Esports again, and this time, Elysium don't actually have the champions that are gonna itemize great for it. I, I actually don't mind the Graves, if I'm being it's perfectly honest. I think that the Graves might struggle into the Karthus a little bit, because um, you're kind of always in his range of Q, but... I, I do think with the Ezreal, you do need, you know, kind of another threat of the AD damage. That's why we saw Khan ban out the Briar, ban out the um, Kindred. They, they, they recognize that Elysium needs to fill a hole, and so they do ban out those AD-centric junglers. Um, so I don't mind the Graves pivot, uh, but I do, I 100% I think you're right with the Orn over the Maokai. Um, I, I just think that an Orn would fit really, really well into this comp, and I think Orn Syndra is like a secret cheat code with that splinter, you know, once you upgrade that item and you get max splinters on Syndra, I think it's one Q win and all, anybody is dead in the game. So I, I think that an Orn wouldn't have been a bad angle here, but I don't hate their composition. I just don't love it. I, I think that's kind of where I'll stand with it right now. Well, we're all going to stand up and get to an intermission here. We've uh, burned through the Spectator delay uh, pretty quickly here, but we will be on a Summoner's Rift pretty quickly. I'm going to take a short break here, guys, and see... If Lysium Dawn can avoid the 0-2 fall here in the biggest of games this season.
back in to us. Back into Summer Reserve. Excuse me, everybody. Here, so Silver. Game number two. Grand Finals Blue Otter Diamond League. And Ooh. looks like everybody's stacking up as five once more. Are we on a crash course? You got Waffle on the Thresh. Very good early game support creator. Ooh. Are they throwing a fake, fake here? I like ah. this. Oh, this is smart. Oh, no. Yeah, this is really it. smart. Oh, my. Hey, Protea's dead. I mean, what a start. You needed to find some sort of momentum if you are Elysium Dawn and the old bait and switch comes across. That was that was genius. I, I feel like I haven't seen that before in amateur league or in professional play where you throw out a little bait like that and uh, you get someone to take the bait. And uh, I think Protato's looking a little silly right now. And uh, if you're Elysium Dawn, you're feeling great. Getting a kill, getting a kill on my Syndra. You know, getting ahead early in this game, too. Everything's looking good. Yeah, Dark Seal and an extra potion in this lane is going to be very nice, you know. Just to help you maintain wave, wave prio. Keep up some extra health here. Sadly, since it is a level 1 Cinder, you aren't really able to get Splinters of Wrath too easily. So, yeah. didn't get any jibbies from that, but a kill will have to suffice. Kill should help out here. And yeah, what a great start. Great death sentence from Waffle. We're seeing the airy come across for Danny on the Syndra. I like that more up against the Orion. I wouldn't have hated first strike. It does nerf your burst ability a bit. Might signal that Danny's going to take the Syndra a, a, a Leon Priest route, which is going to be good to that Cassante. But yeah, certainly a lead here. Now what I want to watch, go for any you were talking about before we got back on here. For a little feat, tough matchup for him up against Karthus, except for these first crucial couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we'll see if there's any tricky pathing coming out here from Furry as this Graves. Um, they want to go in for the invade. The thing is, because of that level one play, you can already see there is a lot of topside vision here. Two wards invested in that river towards that entrance and towards the uh, Baron Pit. So, oh, uh, Procedo. available. Oof. All right. I'm Barely assuming Danny. Yeah, I'm assuming Danny had cooldowns. Now he hits level three. Could look for a flash guy of the week, and Potato knows it, so he's going to back up here. But, man, this has got to feel good for Danny. Uh, you know, he did do well up against Potato in lane. It's just after that is when, when this matchup kind of became lopsided. Yeah, Danny has not had a bad series so far by any means. I, you know, I, I think we were singing his praise early on. It was 2-0 and on the Yone. We are thinking maybe this Yone is the answer. Um, obviously did not end up that way, but Ooh, are really, really, really good start. I, I, I also, you know, I do want to, you know, give a shout out. Waffle has had a very good series so far. So has Yarg, and we're going to see it here. Yeah, gets the slow of the Glacial Prism, but Protatus is too far away, can't step up. You don't have a lot of kill threat with Sir Rizel's Karthus. So Yarg damage. just doing a bit of damage, kind of poking Danny off, trying to reset the wave. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's not negligible damage to Danny. Danny took a good 30% chunk right there just from the, uh, just from the Rakan, and so that's going to help out in the long term. Also, getting that shove in, going to help your Orianna out. So, um, happy days. Also, realizing there's not really any kill threat in the bot side. It's an Ezreal. And so, I mean, that's great work. I, it's, I feel like we don't talk enough about supports. You know, I'm a support main, so I'm, of course I'm going to say that. But realistically, I feel like, you know, Waffle had some really good plays in the last game. I, I, I feel like um, Yarl has been pretty decent. This has been a... It's been a support series so far, fellas. Am I right or am I right? You're wrong. Yeah. I'm wrong. I am wrong. That is correct. But I mean, it is, you know, yeah, the wrong. point still stands. Yeah. They, they just weren't the deciding factors it kind of felt like. Although, Yargo's that Heimerdinger was a really huge use this last game. Very, oh, looking for a bit of an invade here. Does spot out Rizal. Taking that Grom thinks that earlier ward is going to get knocked up here. Should he be able to get out of this, question mark? Well, the turn's coming out because Protato's also going to chase down. They're going to pass each other by. Furry Little Feet will survive, but now Idris might be caught. Doesn't have cleanse, has flash if he needs it. Arcane Shift should be up. Gets poked down. Sir Rizel getting a lot of maxing out of his Karthus kit. Just a ton of poke. Wall going to flash oh, forward. Oh. The distance sideways gets Protato flash. Double scatter the weak. Yarg turning it back, though, and will slay Waffle. Will fall, but he sets up Sunscorch, who's been full health and ignored this entire fight once again. Gonna to cash in that final kill for a little feet way too low to contest and it's oh, gone no. eastward sir oh, myself no. flashing over the wall is karthus forces a flash out of furry little feet that is one aggressive angle for a karthus i don't 
ever want to hear again that this isn't a support series. That was set up by Waffle, gets the flash off of the uh, off of the Oriana, but it was an even better play right there by the Rakan. Gets the kill, gets a double knockup, it, you know, sets up the Oriana ball. Beautiful, beautiful work from both supports. But uh, only one can be king, and right there it does feel like Yargo's the king. Gets the kill advantage for his team. Gets the kills in the right places as well. Beautifully played by this Khan Esports squad. And right now I think the biggest question is, can anybody stop them? Because as of right now, they're looking pretty untouchable in this series so far. And a big thing in that fight was no one was level 6 in that engage. So that really protracted it on out. And if you're just protracting that fight on out, that's going to favor the Karthus so much. Ryzel able to get so much value out of that defile there and really move through these members. That's what really helped them set that up. three for one up there. Yeah, yeah exactly. The longer a fight goes on with the Karthus alive, it's usually not a great sign at and all. And or yeah. dead. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm saying because, because, you know, if he's alive and then he dies and he still gets damage out, right? When you kill him, you at least have a timer on his damage. But yeah, Karthus, Sir Rizel, hit a lot of cues. Gotta give a lot of credit over towards Khan Esports because at least in Sir Rizel and Yarg's case, they're playing two champions right now that are opposites of what they, the kits they were utilizing game number one, and they still look just as sharp in a completely different play style. Yeah, and it goes to show the type of player that they are. You know, this is the best uh, ability is availability. The best uh, talent is versatility. And Danny, uh, Danny should be fine. He's, yeah, he's just going to get stat checked. Uh, not enough to kill him off just a dark seal and an unsealed spellbook from Protato. Good chunk. Gives it lane prial over Protato, but no kills. kills. Okay. But the damage is there. This Oriana, not weak right now. And uh, Gopher, I do want your expert opinion as, uh-oh, I will have to wait for it. Smoke screen. Potato oh. is summoner list. Danny's way too low to be going for this. That's a flash away from Yar who shows up. The arrow beautiful. from distance is beautiful. Sir Rizel going to cash in with his damage. The scatter of the week, not enough. It's Ooh. the bottom lane roam once more. They're impacting a lot more than just the bot side of the map right now. Hold on, Sir Rizel just got six right now. Oh, Bye -bye, oh Danny's... Oh. Uh. I was about to say, I was waiting for it. I was like, how close is he? Because he's level five. That is a huge wave right there that he could get some XP off of. And uh, was close enough. Was able to get the kill right there. Beautiful arrow. And then uh, the slam dunk from the rest of the team. And go Perino, stop me if you've heard of this one. Mid game starting to start snowball in Connie's sports favor. Mid game? It's only eight minutes. This is when we had the first blood last game. Is that... <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot later in the game with just the fact we've seen this many fights so far um but the fact that there's a 302 karthus already eight and a half minutes in that is insanely scary um Rizal, especially with first strike gold should be finishing the leandries here pretty soon and just smelt through everyone that is uh not gonna be a fun thing to deal with here do like this move for furry little feet though recognize the mid had prowl for a minute also more importantly the bot roll bot Back timers were up there for Connie Sports. So, Furry Little Feet will take that Drake away for free. Not something the least, because, like you mentioned, the rest of the rift is pretty brutal, and Danny might just be dead. Another beautiful roam from Yarg sets up the Shockwave, and Protato will not miss that one. Yeah, I, I, I want to give credit over. I feel like that was the arrow right there. Uh, and, and, and I'm getting word from our producer. Indeed, it was. So, how about Sunscorch with these crazy arrows? I mean, they don't just let anybody into Cloud9. Sunscorch obviously impressed Jack right there with plays like that, getting his, his mid laner ahead. And uh, I feel like if Berserker needs a day off, we've got Sunscorch to fill in. That's true. I mean, granted, mid lane arrows as Ash tend to be pretty easy, Um, at least if you back. That's one thing I used to love doing as Ash in solo queue. You just back, ask mid laner, hey, if I land arrow, can you kill him? I'll hold that power looking for the W to land. It does land. Ooh. Yep, Furry gets chunked down a bit, does dash away, but Yarg is continuously proving Bonfire right right now. I know. Because he has just had so much F impact on this Rakan. It's another great interest knockup. Furry Little Feet just can't even get into the river. 
There is a true shot barrage, just does a little bit of poke damage, not much there. Potato is low, doesn't get stunned by the Scare of the Week, and now they're gonna go right oh, for Danny. The There's the Wreck Beam coming out. Danny's getting burned. Yarg with a great knockup. Not enough to kill off Danny. Nature's Grass on the other side, but there he goes. Finally, Potato gets the kill. Alfie is going all out, though, in this 2v2, and Furry Little Feet has no chance. Too many dashes. Alfie Day <laughs> trying to close the gap. Can't get the Tofo strikes to hit. Furry Little Feet can't find the trade. He'll scatter his feet back to the base with a gray screen. Con Esports are unrelenting right now. Yeah, I mean, they are choking the life out of this uh, Elysium Dawn squad, a very strong Elysium Dawn squad that we had very high hopes for in this Grand Finals. We are both talking about how we felt like this could be a long one. We might be here for a bit, but as of right now, it has been another day in the office for Con Esports as they continue to just wipe their hands off their off their hands i i don't know I, the, they wipe the blood off their hands as they continue to just just, just dispose of bodies as they uh they, they're eight eight to two kills eight to two kills and remember one of those kills was a oh. minute one uh-oh danny should be all oh, the flash forward that that's a kill potato flashes forward it was a stat check earlier but now with two more kills under his belt and a lot more dark seal stacks that is a confirmed kill it's rough out here for Elysium Dawn fans. Or Danny, I mean, you start the game with that first blood, you have the advantage in lane with that extra dark seal. And you're two and five because there's just been arrows, there have been batons, there have been Karthus is in your lane constantly, it feels like, and now it's at the point where you just eat that shockwave for potato and you die here. That is not the look you want here because you gave up that Orianna in that first rotation here and the Cinder was your answer. Oh. It's just not working out. So have you heard this before? Here comes the grand entrance. Oh, it's the quickness, the arrow whiffs, but for little feet, you are on the wrong side of the state. Unstoppable, Sir Rizel goes. Waffle gonna land a death sentence, but they are still way too far forward. Danny's roaming over. Can he hit a big scatter of the week? Nope, Yarg gets away from it. Sunscorch having to expend that flash, but will stay safe under the turret. And Sir Rizel, mm. extended fight, still just doing as much damage. Has uh -oh. the Requiem if they want, and Protato doesn't need it, gets the kill. There it goes, Waffle. Danny having to flash away, has that on cooldown once more. There is nothing Elysium Dawn can do right now to get a stranglehold on this game. Yeah, they're trying everything right now as well, Slayer. It feels like they're trying invades, they're trying little skirmishes, big team fights. Nothing is going their way. Everything is coming up on esports, and they just continue to tighten the stranglehold they have on them. Just not a lot that they can oh, do. So no. Ryzel is going to drop the Rift Herald in the mid lane. They're going to get all of these plates. Protato is going to be super far ahead. It is a rough, rough look right now. And I just Splash. don't think it gets better. Hold on a second. Scout the weak lands. Waffle. Gotta land the hook here. Needs to land. Oh, Death sends a three-man shockwave with the Requiem. The turn coming out. Do they have enough to get any kills? Not just yet. But that might have been a warning shot from Sir Ryzel. That going forward, that is going to be a lot more damage. Could have also just been a uh, make a money angle here. You do have first strike as Karthus, so every time <laughs> you press that R button, you just get a bit of a fat stack. Oh my, two and a half, almost two and a half K difference oh between these two junglers right now. God damn. Yeah, and you look at the rest of the map, it's not even just in the jungle. How much more gold does he have? I mean, the second in gold is his mid laner who's 500 behind him. I mean, this is a massive, 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 massive Karthus, which should be very concerning to anybody who's played against a massive Karthus before, because you just never get to see y y yourself get blown up. You're, you're walking in mid lane, la di da di da everything's great. And then the Karthus presses R, and there goes half your health bar, and you don't even get to take team fights. And I think that's my biggest concern is, they're not even gonna be able to play, be able to play on, on fair terms even if they get the ideal team fight, because Sir Rizel should just be able to chunk them really whenever he gets his ultimate up. And, you know, I, I know I've been critical of the fact that they are very AP leaning on esports on both of their compositions here, but I'm going to have to hold that thought as Alpha Day is going to get tested 2v1 here. He is all out already, and he now we get to see how much the Cassante tech really pays off. OP Ivy does not have a ton of damage. Furry Little Feet doing a really good job zoning. The arrow, though, is going to land once again from oh, Sunscorch and might sound Alfie Dale oh, for a solo kill. Goodness. He will get it. OP Ivy will get the trade. But Sunscorch is a sniper on Summoner's Rift, and he cannot miss right now. Oh, no. More in the bot lane. Make it oh. stop. 
Death Sentence lands. Double teleport coming out from both of these members. Yarg is really low. Idris is going to find that kill. The Triforce Ezreal gets it done. Danny racing forward. Gets the scatter of the week on to Sir Rizel. Flashes away from the Unleashed Power. Shockwave back. Gets a ton of damage down. Sunscorch now gets the turn and burn. Potato low. Another shutdown comes across. Sunscorch though is free firing. Ooh. Has the arrows on full blast. The volley won't land. And here oh. comes the Requiem. You can get Sir Rizel away, but the Requiem will find you a dominating Karthus for Khan Esports. Oh, it looked so good, Slayer. It looked so good. They got the double teleport. They got the initial engage. They burst down this Rakan that was pesky the entire time. And then it just wasn't so good for a little bit. I just don't think there's anything you can do. OP uh, Ivy might be dead. Oh, oh, goodness. One more. I should be fine. Oh Should my be. god, Sun Scorched. He has Lethal Temple going crazy. Now he's a little too far forward. The arrow on the waffle won't stun him very oh long. Goodness. But the slows are permanent. Protato can't get the damage though on the Oriana. But Sun Scorched just 1v3 zoned off a multitude of Elysium Dawn members on Ash. And Elysium has to be thankful that the Requiem's down. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they get that to live. Made that. They were they were allowed to live. But by the way, Maokai teleport did for that engage. It, what, what what was essentially either an even engage or a losing engage, uh, engage, and they lost their entire top turret. So uh, yeah, not ideal. Because now you have to worry about Alpha Day, who pretty much this entire game has is gone pretty quiet. Um, not to his discredit, just hasn't really had a lot thrown his way, but. I feel like this Cassante could play a much bigger role in this game now because if you look at the gold real quick, mm -hmm. uh, you'd imagine pretty, pretty rich and, yeah, up about 900 gold on his top lane counterpart. Yeah, one of the smaller gold leads here, though, for their team. Uh, what does that say about the game state? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was kind of implied. Very <laughs> <laughs> looking here, spotted oh, out. Oh, yeah, Great hot shot. Furry here. You're zero and four and only have the ghost blade. I don't think that's enough to burst out this ash here. <laughs> it's not like OP Ivy is going to bring any damage to the table either. And they spot him out. So Sir Rizel, who's been on point macroly as much as honestly in the kill department, take the Rift Herald on spawn. You know exactly where Furry Little Feet is. This is as free as they come. Yeah, that is a free Rift Herald. Oh no. Good. no. Sniper get down. Oh, oh my goodness. Waffle should be happy to survive right there. Because realistically, if that hits, that is a shockwave immediately after, and Waffle is done so. Able to dodge out, but it is a minor victory as they do lose the Rift Herald and uh, they roll Alpha Day bot. So I don't think they're going to lose too much bot as I think that Alpha Day likes these odds. Yeah, they're going to try it again. Really tanky now with the Jack Show completed, and Furry Little Feet is just too far behind to go for a tank Cassante. They have Waffle in the area if they really want to try and shut down the Cassante, but of all people to try and jump on, Alpha Day is not the best target. Yeah. Uh, I'd be oh. all out. They do have Sun Scorch Cod here on the other side. Good flash wave in the Sky of the Week. The Nature's Grasp. Alpha Day does take no one way. of those roots, so Sun Scorch is, is safe. Available. And now Cassante going all out. The shielding will save him for a bit. The quickness from Yang trying to get the trade out. Waffle flashes for the Death Sentence will fall. Sir Rizel's Godlike still has Requiem up whenever he wants it. But first he wants to poke down Danny, who eats an arrow and is sent to the great screen. See you later, Danny. It's all left to OPIV, who has no flash, no way out of the pit, and will fall to Protato. You can catch our Cassante, but Khan Esports will pay you back three times full. Yeah, and this has kind of been the story of the series so far, Slayer. I'm just going to coin that phrase, story of the series by Bonfire. Uh, this has been the story of the series so far. It has been the initial punch, which is like a love tap, and then the massive crowbar to the face that Khan Esports will give you. Uh, yay, we killed the top lane Cassante. That's fantastic. Oh, we lost three of our members. Our mid laners, two and seven, our junglers, oh and four. It's a it's a minor happiness followed by the Great Depression. And it is not been great for Elysium Dawn because they just cannot get the ball rolling. Uh, it feels like every time there's a, a slightly winning play, they immediately get slapped back down. Ooh. I was looking at the AP difference here between Danny and Rizal. Danny had like 166 AP. Rizal has 375, so 
Yeah, this Syndra is really not going to be hurting people too much. Only on 72 Splinters as well. Oh my god, second item death cap? Yeah, why not? I mean, it, it does net you more money from your first strike, because you do more damage. <laughs> this is true. Bigger ultimates. I love it. He's been maxing it, right? He, he's got to be... He's not gonna do, listen, Sir rizel has got to degrade economics as much as he stunts on the Rift. I, I can already tell by the way he's itemizing in this game. Yeah, I, I feel like Sir Rizal has dinner plans tonight um, because he is he's going for the big old damage builds. And uh, with the way that he's playing, you'd have to imagine that this is a man who uh, has, has prior plans. They are trying to get this series done as quickly as possible. Going to drop the Rift Hero bot. Oh, waffle. Awful. 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 All right. Okay. Destiny lands. The arrow doesn't. Yarg's here, though. Quickness, Shockwave. See you later, Waffle. Every time you think you've got to pick on Takan Esports, oh, they wow. will turn it back in your face. Protato is almost going to fall to Danny, but the Ludens over the Leomdries make sure that he limps away safe. The tier two to fall. This game collapsing for Luffy. Can't even land the collateral damage. It whiffs. They do have Yarg stunned up, but he gets back safely. Oh, and now Sunscorch once uh -oh. again has been untouched. And here comes Alpha Day teleporting in. Oh, it's actually Protato who shows back up. Can't land the ball on anybody to get some damage down. But it's 21 minutes and the base being hounded, oh, and here no. comes the Requiem. You cannot oh, run from Sir Rizel. Oh, they just God. got back to lane two. Some of these health bars on Con were so low. Just not enough. That's how far behind Elysium is. That's going to be an inhibitor taking down without the need of the Baron buff here. 21 and a half minutes in. Don't even be able oh, to get anyone no. off the back here. Flashes into the arrow, can't even find the trade. There's just no foothold right now for Elysium Dawn. The slows from those volleys is enough to make sure they can't even get the trade. We are, this game is actually worse than game number one for Elysium Dawn. Really? Maybe. Actually, I might actually oh, agree with that. Course. I think they're pretty equal. I think it's been, I think, I think it's between a poop sandwich and a poop burrito. I don't think it's been good either way. I think both ways are eating a big old big bag of poop it's not it's, it's not been good <laughs> you I'm stop sorry. saying poop Keep, not, about... look man it's not the most elegant way it's not the most eloquent way to put it but we're being realistic here all right this is the coaching advice you get from bonfire it's just been it's been a rough pickings all right blue water okay. fans please sign up for coachify because i guarantee you you can coach better than this maybe they want me to coach them maybe that's maybe that's why they sign up they're like i wonder what bonfire can teach me let me tell you, not a lot. <laughs> what can you teach Elysium Don in this game number two right now, Bonfire? Uh, I'll, de I'll defer to I'll defer to Gofreno. I feel like I feel like Gofreno might have know this a little bit better than I. Ah, uh, I know things are looking a little joker. All right, never mind. Gofreno has a back <laughs> same coaching strategy as me, which is no win to surrender. All right, well, here's the play, though. They're once going oh, for Alphaday. Waffle gorgeous. just gets popped by a shockwave. Way too low already. Uh, Yudri's hey, having to flash away. away Arcane nope. Shift. You cannot kill Alphaday. Even in All Out, he's still safe. The shields are Potato, just enough to make sure he's topped off. Yudri's falls. OP Ivy having to flash away from the uh, Brunt missile that is heat seeking gorgeous. towards his squad. Danny dies for a ninth time. And once oh. again, you cannot run from Sir Rizel's Requiem. Ace. Oh, so Con Esports. How about Yarg, man? Finishing it off in style. A little bit of support or combat. Not much to say about this one, Slayer. Just a good old-fashioned spanking. You took cookies out of the jar. This is what you get. No need for a Baron. I think they should be able to end here. AD carries up in two seconds, but not a lot of wave clear on this Ezreal with these super minions. I think Idris is just going to have to watch as his Nexus falls. Yeah, that... Fat Patty can come out. Nope, they're all business here. Game two, somehow more one sided for Khan Esports. A six and one on the season, the regular season, cruise to the grand finals, and you all at home are seeing exactly why with this 2 0 lead. Yeah, I'm, this game was even quicker. Like last game was 26 minutes flat. This one, 24 minutes and nine seconds. We didn't even see the Baron taken. Like, they really just came out swinging this game on the side of Khan. Yeah, I think we're seeing them really hit their groove and figure out what works for them. And and I feel like a lot of times you talk about esports, traditional sports, you hear the you hear the phrase flow state thrown around a lot. 
Um, and it's where like everything just comes natural, right? You, you feel like you can just do anything and it is second nature to you. And I, I feel like Khan is in a little bit of a flow state right now. They're trying out different champions. They're having fun with it. They're, they're taking back losing plays. They're skirmishing expertly uh, or expertly. Like it just, it just doesn't feel like they can do any wrong. And uh, I, I don't know, <laughs> unfortunately, how Elysium Dawn cracks that flow state. I mean, they need to make them uncomfortable. Maybe a pocket pick would work, but it feels like they've thrown some interesting picks out there. It hasn't been that they've been slaves to the meta. I, I don't know kind of where the turn is because both of these drafts, we've said Elysium Dawn, not too bad. We, we, we weren't too mad at these drafts. And uh, both times, they got slapped. So you got to go back to the drawing board, go reconvene with your coach, and Figure out how the hell you're going to crack this slow state. Yeah, I've got, yep. Sorry, guys, I had the janitor on speed dial. Because this thing is looking like we might be heading right for a sweep. We're going to go over to a break Ooh. here. Elysium Dawn have to figure out something, just some way to be competitive in a game here, or we are going to have the quickest grand finals in, I'll say it, Blue Otter history. We'll see you guys on the other side of another break. Game three draft. Let's see what Elysium Dawn can cook up.
Back in action, as always here, but maybe not for long. Great, grand. Game number three of our grand finals here, Blue Otter Diamond League, and might just have to name it the Con Esports Cup at this point with how we have seen them perform. Last two games, they have taken a 2-0 series lead with a total of 50 minutes on Sumner's Rift in both games. That's a stat that shows utter dominance. And now they get to go back onto the blue side as Elysium Dawn have opted for red side here in this game number three. And I'm scared Bonfire because I don't see a Cassante ban yet. And I feel like that's just, yeah, that needs to happen. I was about to say, I'm concerned wow. there's no Cassante ban. They were listening. Yes. Let's go. All right. Off to a far. great start here. Off to a great start here. So they banned out Cassante, the Udyr. The Oriana, which does mean that they leave up the Rel and the Melio. Kind of interesting. And the uh, Talia. Or not the Talia. Yeah, the Rel, the Melio, and the Oriana. No, the Rel and the Melio. Rel and the Melio. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up with all these bands. Khan, however, is not going to go towards the Rel. Towards the Maokai themselves, which I feel like is not that important, but we'll have to see. Certainly could be. Ash is stolen away here by Elysium Dawn, so they will... They'll grab that one, and they're just doubling down on CC out the gate. They do select the Rel on top of that. Likely a support pick here, uh, but could certainly, for Waffle, could certainly go into the jungle if they'd like to have some flexibility in their draft. Hmm. That's what I'm thinking. It definitely gives a lot of flexibility here, but you don't, I don't think you typically see the Ash Rel combo in the bot lane, but with that Jinx lock in, you might want something just that has super hard engaged to get on top of this Jinx. The Melio, though, that has been banned this entire series does get through and how clap who's melio is going to be a lot of protection here for this jinx and that is a scary concept i do not hate the blitzcrank pick and it is going to go right. through they've got themselves a very very pick oriented composition so far and i like elysium's comp quite a lot right now the ash rel um and the blitzcrank very very high cc good damage rel jungle i feel like is very very strong right now and I, I feel like, you know, remember I was talking about the pitfalls of drafting last game and how I felt like there were certain champions that maybe look great on paper but aren't? Jinx is in that book for me. I think Ezreal and Jinx are two of the 80 carries in that book. I do not buy into the Jinx yet. I, I, I understand they get excited and how strong that could be in team fights. I just would rather have a Zaya or a Kaisa. And so we'll have to see if the Jinx can prove me wrong. Definitely has some a bit, it has some targets that they can burst down and get excited from, but I just don't love the AD carry. It is pretty good with the Melio, though. It's a good, it's a good pairing. Yeah, I'm not really in agreement with you, Bonfire. I can't lie. I think Jinx Melio is a top three bottom lane still. Um, because wow. if, if if you want to, if you if the game of the game is scaling up and waiting for fights. It is, it is very deadly. And also, Melio is a great response to Ash because you can just Breath of Light immediately whoever gets smacked by that arrow if you are close enough on that Melio. Rel, Blitzcrank means that you have to slam some sort of damage in other lanes, in your solo lanes. So the Croc is going to be picked. The Aatrox, the answer, go for Reno. So top lane finally isn't just going to be kind of a snooze fest, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, top lane the previous two games was in a... Okay, in game number one, it wasn't a snooze fest, but... It was also really one-sided here. In theory, the Renekton can go really well to the Aatrox early on because you're able to dash on in, get out before that Aatrox is able to get a lot of amp up back against you, and you do have the mobility to dodge those Dark and Blade Qs. Make sure you aren't getting hit by those sweet spots, but can present issues later. The Syndra being hovered as a response here to the Azir, a little bit concerning for me because yeah. usually one of the best ways you answer the Azir is by just out launching him. Um, and the Syndra can't really do that here, and you can't really pressure the Azir early. And giving Azir free scaling is insanely scary. Yeah, I, 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 I think the Azir is a fantastic lock in here because there's a lot of immobile champions on the side of Elysium, so a good stream of shuffle will send everybody flying in the air and uh, right into the opening arms of an Aatrox. So I, I think that... The Azir, a, a great pick. I like the Aatrox as well. Just has to survive lane against Renekton. Um, and I think Khan, maybe for the first time of the series, has a fairly, on paper, 
good draft. I think the last two games they've had some weird picks where we've been like, whoa, how's that going to turn out? And obviously it did turn out well. This is a bit more meta. This is a bit more along the lines of what you would expect to see in Worlds. I feel like I could actually like tune into a T1 game and see this. You know, Zeus on the uh, on the Aatrox. You got Faker on the Azir. Owners, Maokai is not great, but you could see that in the Jinx Melio on the bot side. So this is a bit more meta. This is something you, I feel like we'd see a bit more. Uh, Elysium, uh, same kind of thing. Pretty meta draft, uh, very pick oriented. But once they do get that pick, nobody is surviving all of that CC. So wrong in that regard as well. Ghana, this is the most meta oriented draft they've had. Yeah, they, they yeah. were going a lot more comfort pick oriented the other two games. Trying to get creative. And the main point is that they're, they're not playing for early game for once. So what does that look like with their play style? I, I, you could get into a situation where they over index early thinking they're playing like they did the last two games. They have the momentum and they could find themselves in a tricky spot. But the way Khan moves around the map and they seem to be as a team, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, this comp is, is really well designed for like these two have mentioned already. You just kind of farm up on Azir, you farm up on Jinx Melio, you know, maybe you have this Maokai trying to create gank angles in Nature's Grass when 6 comes around. Aatrox is going to be in a bit of a bloodbath in the top lane, but if you survive through it and you, and you, you know, path through neutral objectives well, once, item, you know, two item power spikes come through for a lot of these carries, it's really tricky for Elysium to get anything going on the map if they don't have those hooks set up, those Ash Arrow picks set up. Yeah, although... The hook factor alone from Waffle is going to give Elysium some pretty nice comeback potential in this game if they do fall behind because the Zero, Melio, and Jinx all great and easy targets to up here if you do happen to get in range, um, which might be a little bit of an issue here uh, as the game goes on. However, though, you are going to have to land those hooks here because we have mentioned the Melio will be able to cleanse out of most of the other pick potential here, like all right, you stunned the back line here. I'm just going to pop ultimate here and everybody's out all hunky-dory. That's uh, very scary when there's an Azir and Jinx at two to three items. I'll ask you this from a, uh, this is from a place of uncertainty and unknowingness. Um, Melio obviously has the ability to extend your auto attack range. Does that work with Azir soldiers? I don't think it does. I don't but... know. I don't, I don't I... know it does i don't believe it does uh because because otherwise rapid fire would increase it yeah so, i I, I i think it, yeah it, it would just just azir's normal auto attacks um because yeah. so. you do see a lethal temple azir on some people i think i forget if that room is true or not though hey, that is true you do see a good question Tempo. yeah that's a good question it, it depends how azir's soldiers are treated compared to his base auto attacks if they're if they're under a different classification no, but if they fall under the same classification like Zeri's Q does, yes, they will They will get extended. I, to be honest with you, though, I don't really think it matters because usually later in the game with Azir's soldiers, his shoulders are so far, soldiers are so far up, Melio's range isn't really going to be a factor. He's already got enough of them up far enough forward that they'll be doing tons of work. True. It's true. The question is, will it keep Azir in a safer position? Because that is always the issue with Azir that you kind of run into is that uh, you do kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of putting yourself in a tough position. But we'll have to see. I think that uh, as you're very, very strong right now, and I'm excited. A big, big game three clash. Should be fun to see. Uh, although I'm hoping that it's a little closer than the last two games. Yeah, yeah we, are, we have yet to break past 26 minutes in this series. So it doesn't happen very often. Uh, and this game... Unless it's like the most disastrous early game of the entire series, I think we'll at least go that long for once because Khan okay. don't have snow like super snowballing champions that spike mid game. So that's the one fleeting hope. Elysium Don, though, they should look for some level one craftiness. You've got Ashlow's, Rel, and Blitzcrank together. We'll see if they could try to get a, a first blood pick, but go for Reno. They did that last game, and boy, did it not matter. Yeah. I mean, granted, there was also just a lot of focus amid from Rome's, like Sir Rizal, you saw the uh, Ash Ultimates coming on in, and of course Yark was there 24-7, it felt like, so like, yeah, you got first blood, but it's also kind of a 4v1 in mid lane, it feels like. Yeah. Certainly uh, certainly won't be a... F oh, go ahead, Bonfire. 
I didn't really have anything to say. <laughs> then why? Then why'd you why? Why'd you say anything then? I don't know. I was just gonna throw some lead caster jangle up. I, I was trying to. I don't know. Should have said something about tempo. That's that is the greatest caster go-to word. This is tempo, true. Tempo, tempo is used to uh, used a lot. It's on a knife's edge, we'll say. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, before these guys uh, recite every single caster trope they can think of on the top of their head, we'll go to the break. Got a spectator delay to eat through here. And the other side could be the last game of the season. Blue Otter Diamond League. Do we end in a sweep or does Elysium Dawn start to level the playing field? We'll find out in a couple of minutes. Rift once more, Blue Otter fans. And we are looking to see if Elysium Dawn have a response. They 3 0 their semifinal opponents and are on the brink of being 3 0 themselves in the grand finals. And like we expected with a Rel, a Blitzcrank early, looking for some level one shenanigans, but a counter 
invade set up here as well. Oh boy. Ooh, into their trap. Oh, do they know? They have Feels both like the they entrances know. warded, so they see the pincer maneuver oh, no. coming out. Ooh. Uh, I'm really scared. Yeah, I like this. They're sitting on the backside of the brush, so if a hook comes through, it likely won't hit. But actually, Elysium Dawn not opting to go too crazy. They just take the scouting report, not willing to commit further. Ooh, and they're moving up to this top side because Elysium, they, they didn't know that there was that five-man stack there in that bot lane brush right by the red buff. So they thought like, okay, maybe they saw us coming in. We'll take a peek up towards top side. That's where our jungle wants to start their clip anyways. Not seem to be the case, and I'm gonna be a very calm level one despite the tension in the air. Nothing happening. Both teams like ships in the night, except for one of the ships has a light on it, <laughs> and then they saw everything, and then the other ship didn't see anything. That's kind of where we're at. That was a terrible hook waffle, and uh, I mean, one for one on hitting hooks, I suppose, but right into the minion's face. Um, that is, I, I think. Probably the most important part of this composition, whenever you have a Blitzcrank, it's can you hit the important hooks. Um, I think there was a Worlds game. I can't remember who picked it, if it was missing or if it was... Uh, I just cannot remember who picked it. But there was a Worlds game where there was a Blitzcrank picked and it did absolutely nothing. Oh, and, it kept uh, hooking the uh, front line into their team. I think exactly, it was one of the quarterfinals games. Exactly. And so that, that's what it comes down to, man. A Blitzcrank could be your, your your best friend or your biggest enemy. And I feel like, you know, I hate to say it, but support is going to have a huge impact in this game. You don't hate to say that. He no, I don't. No, I don't. I love he says it. it. <laughs> he could, he'll say it every game. You if, know, you. Supports are 005 on both sides. You got to admit, though, Yarg and Waffle have both had very, very impactful series. Of I think one of them has. Yarg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this was a game five at a 2-2. I would, I would be inclined to agree, but it's 2-0, and we've spent one very long League of Legends game's worth of time on Summoner's Rift. It is hard to have an impact when you're behind, though. 100%. Also true. Especially as support, you're down, like, five Ooh. levels on the solo laner. Okay, well, there's the yeah, first hook landed. They immediately ignite Sunscorched. Idris is getting the slow through. Heal pop for Yarg. Sunscorched having to flash in response to that ghost. So there you go. Early impact from Waffles Blitzcrank. Yeah, gets the hook. Uh, immediately the slow comes down. And that is the strength of the Ash in the lane. It's just probably the best kiting AD carry in the game. And uh, really, really great work there. Able to get some kite down. Some pie. Really. Good movement so far on the mid lane, dodging on a lot of the scabbard of the weeks. Uh, but importantly, they get the heal off of Yarg, and they also get the flash. And Senpai might have to flash here as well. Nope, good dodge. Cocky, cocky movement. Able to keep his flash and uh, do well there. Oh my god. Yarg just went for the backwards kickball tech onto Idris and actually ends up getting a flash. But the roam down is coming across. Sunscorch is looking to burn Idris first as the junglers meet each other in the river. Idris is backed off. This is a 3v2. But Sir Rizel is being burned down by this rel way too really low. low. Sunscorch has lethal tempo going, but needs to run away. Gets flash knocked up by Waffle. And it's first blood over to Furry Little Feet. Pulls Sir Rizel back in. Furry Little Feet flashes to follow. A double kill. Who said? As well and Blitzcrank can't commit on kills. Yeah, I, look, I, I said it. You know, this Blitzcrank could be your best friend or your worst enemy, Waffle, right now. Making the case that there's a BFF in Summoner's Rift. Doing a great job right there. Getting the hooks, getting the CC, layering it up. There was no flash on Jinx from that previous engagement. And gets them a two kill advantage and a 1500 gold advantage. Massive stuff. Massive. Uh, I mean, you, you get gold onto a tank rel, but you can see already getting a Cinder Hulk with that money. So going to make it very hard for Furry Little Feet to even die in any of these early skirmishes. And this has got to be the first time that Elysium Dawn have ever had a gold lead in forever. They had a gold lead last game because they got the first Oh, one. right, right. That's it's hard to remember those lead. things. It's, it, it's hard to remember those things with how that game ended. They did That's also... True. They might have had a gold lead in game number one because they got the first blood there too, although that was much later. Potato and a bit of danger here. X Flash. I can fuck this mark. Yep, should be able to just back, get himself away. Waffle could look for something if he wanted to really be aggressive, but decides to be okay. They should know that Frey Little 
speed is here, and Sir Rizal is going to confirm that. Smite away the big raptor, but loses all the small ones. Good invade there. Very little feet. For all that it's worth, after that Graves game, pretty good bounce back so far on the rel. Back on tank duty, and so far, so good. And uh, I, I like also what we're seeing out of Waffle, roaming around a lot, you know? Not, not being condemned to the bot lane, just trying to get engages on the bot lane. Doing a great job at uh, helping out across the map. And uh, we look towards topside. Hey, remember when we were excited about this top lane battle? Good days, good days. Nothing's happened yet. No, just some wave manipulation for both of them. I'm sure knowing both are next in Aatrox's kit, they will look for some big all-in. Now they both have ultimates available at some point here. It does seem like OPIV was playing to just farm up. He did actually back and buy a coal at one point. So points oh. to that he's actually fine with this being a bit of a snoozer lane. Mid lane might be not a much of a snoozer as Elysium Dawn have now taken the... Con Esports Game 2 approach to mid lane, which is constantly roam, waffle, and furry little feet in the Ooh. mid lane looking for Potato. The problem is this time, Potato is yet to even really pay any sort of toll. Rizal is in the river here. Oh he's no. A dragon. Oh, this is an easy collapse. Twisted advance to create some distance, but Sir Rizal solo, the flash guy of the week, on point. Danny doesn't get the kill, but furry little feet on a killing spree, and that'll just set up this Drake take for free. Finally, do we have Elysium Dawn coming to play? Yeah, I feel like we're seeing signs of life from Elysium Dawn. Some mistakes possibly from Sir Rizel. Just good vision manipulation uh, in the in the river right there. And they, uh, they get themselves a gold lead. And it feels like they're in a good position in this game as well to snowball. And I think sometimes you can get a gold lead and it's either it's not substantial enough or it's not on important members. And, you know, I know it's a tank rel, but... Uh, being able to engage as Rel and still be able to, you know, get out at the end of the day is very important. And uh, this Rel will be hyper uh, accelerated. So, interesting to see if, how they can make that work. You'd imagine that could, you know, potentially transition. Hold on. And here we go. This will be talking on top. Both the ultimates popped, but Alpha Day is actually way worse for wear. I had to flash away. Hope IP just not having the slice and dice available. It looks like they're used it to engage that fight. So for Flash, we'll see how Ivy can set up the lane here. Won't be the lane actually. It'll be setting up the kill. Furlow Feet has ultimate if, she, if they want it. There's the Metal Storm out. Sir Rizel's dead. Furry Little Feet's Rel Jungle is now four and zero in game number three. But there's gonna be more kills. Yarg way too low. Idris is gonna pick up that one. Sunscorch also having to back up, and my god, Elysium Dawn, they just need to pick aggressive early, and Protato Senpai is going to make sure the perfect game is over. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like this was originally a, a question of will this be, oh, hold on a second. Oh, good flash oh. away from Sunscorch, he does get excited. Sunscorch needs to get back towards Whoa, the turret, rips the really rocket, deep. Idris is not tanking turret, so will survive. Yarg is going to show up. Really doesn't have much in the kill department. Does have flash if he wants it. Flash kickball won't land. The airy nearly gets the kill. One more auto. Yarg has the trade. And topside, Alpha Day and Sir Rizel have taken down OP Ivy and grabbed a rift for him grabbing the rift herald. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Now we're getting craziness on the map. This is a lot more like game one where it was a very slow tempered start. And uh, now we're starting to get some wildness across the rift. And I don't really think it's in the favor of this uh, Elysium Dawn squad. They were very measured. They had things kind of the way that they liked them. And uh, I think this chaos is probably not going to benefit them. But at the end of the day, they still do have that lead. And uh, you know, that is going to benefit them. I, I was going to say before all of these kills went across, maybe it wasn't that it was a 3-0. Maybe it was that every kill, every fight is going to, or every game is going to be a, a blowout. And we're going to have just five blowout games. So I'm hoping that this one's close. It's definitely close right now. I mean, in terms of early game leads, this is a pretty sizable lead for Elysium, but also it is like still a 2K differential. Waffle does have the flank oh, no. here. The arrow is not available, though. And yeah, Waffle should know they were spotted there, judging by that zap. Just going to fizzle out. <laughs> I get oh, that. Fizzle, I see you. That, 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 that's smart. I like that one, Gofarina. Almost as smart as it's vision in bot side. That's four red wards here in that bot side quadrant. God damn. Ooh, ooh. Sunscorch really cashing in on that extra melee range. 
as well. Mm. Yeah, they're really worried about Waffle setting up flank angles. Or sorry, they they're yeah. really trying to set up Waffle for flank angles. So I, I switched <laughs> my, my colors around. I got colorblind for half a second. And now Furry Little Feet with that bot side vision is going to be going bot. Yark tanks the oh, arrow. The Breath of Light was me. early. He doesn't cleanse the arrow. He tanks it instead. And Furry Little Feet oh. has his fifth kill of the game. Mega Death Rocket won't find the kill onto Waffle. Sunscorch trying to pick one up with the range he's got on those rockets. Idris is so low. Sunscorch without flash won't be able to find a trade. 250 HP between the Elysium Down bot laners, but it's a kill nonetheless. How does Furry get her doing it? Like. I, it's I, real. I, you don't do a lot of damage. Furry Little Feet has been the benefactor of all of these kills, it feels like. Although there is still two kills on Idri, so I guess it's not the end of the world. But yeah, it, it has been the Furry Little Feet show so far. And uh, I think earlier I was saying, you know, you don't mind if your tank rel gets some kills. But at a certain point, you wouldn't mind Whoa. if somebody else killed. What a dream and shuffle from Protato. Danny has to flash, but he's going to explode. One more auto will get it. It's the airy to find it. Protato looking to be the beam of light here for Khan Esports to sweep chances. OPI Ivy's dead. They're doing so well, too. Solo Five lanes, four. man. They're doing all the work yeah. right now for Khan Esports. Maybe if Ivy had gotten that kill instead of Furry there. Oh, don't start with it. Hindsight. 2020. Oh, Waffle might. Okay, not in any real danger here. The Hawk is going to miss. Good movement there by ER to recognize that. But this is bot lane prio. And an easy second drag, it looks like, especially with Rizal in that top quadrant. Yep, should be able to get this second dragon as well. Continue to extend their now minor lead that they have for themselves. I think they do need to be concerned about mid and top. Eh, Slayer, you said it perfectly. It's the solo lanes right now. And it, it's not like a tank top. It's not like a mid laner who can't get you know anything done by themselves. This is strong by themselves. Uh, so they should all be able to walk out. Potato is taking some very aggressive path. Potato's doing a lot of work with his soldiers. Unleash power early. Sir Rizel more than healthy enough. And here he goes forward dashing. Potato wants this kill. One more soldier oh. auto could do it, but he won't get it. The airy not there to help him this time. But Potato doing so much with this Azir without an item. Ooh, Waffle oh, will land a hook though. And Sir Rizel is it's dead. Rocket. The rocket going to be brunted by Idris. Able to survive the rocket right there. And so another kill goes over to this Elysium Dawn squad. And... I, I don't really know what to make of this game, Slayer. If I'm being perfectly honest, it doesn't feel like either team have, have a very strong hold on it. They're just kind of dancing around it, figuring out who's on top. Either team really have a very great position as Potato. Uh, what are you doing there? Crash down Metal Storm, but Danny can't get close enough with cooldowns. He's going to oh, kill. He flashes to Shereem and shuffle himself to a killing spree. Tanks the turret too much, and Furry Little Feet oh, is going to grab God. his sixth kill. A shutdown <laughs> onto the tank <laughs> rel jungle. <laughs> I mean, this rel might have three items before. No, no, surely not. This is a oh, very, my. very rich row. Up, what is it? 300 on the, on the uh, jungle counterpart? Holy moly. Uh, but on the other side of things, you look at it, the gold, they are down in the top lane. They are down in the mid lane. Oh, and they are pretty much, uh, I guess they're not even in the bot lane. They're, they're ahead in the bot lane. But oh, as a whole, a lot of their lead is in this jungle. I mean, basically all of their lead. <laughs> More than all of it. <laughs> hey. Oh, does that concern you, Gofarino? Yes. Concerns me a little, too. Like, unless you become absolutely unkillable here as Furry, which is going to be really hard unless uh, Sunscorched and Protato are just super far behind, but one of those players is already 3-1 and one right now. So you still got to take a lot of damage to these fights. And uh, you are kind of a walking shutdown it feels like when the team fights do start up here yeah that's the problem as well you know when supports and tank junglers get kills it's like all right yeah you're tanky but you're you're usually giving yourself up for free kills and you have a shutdown on you so it could be a problem it could be a problem here is for little feet's gonna look for something there's the breath of life for the arrow so the arrow tax is paid sir rizel is here to assuage a pick and with his presence make sure the furry little feet does not go in 
But I'm curious how you what, what free little feats itemization looks like on the second. He goes the Sunfire first. Uh, does because you have a Fedazir, is this a more AP angle tank item, magic resist oh, well. angle? Yeah. I don't think there's really a good option either. You're brun I mean, there's so many hyper carries. You have to be concerned about the Q3 damage of an Aatrox. You have to be concerned about the all day Azir poke. You have to be concerned about Jinx getting excited. I, I, oh. There's a good damage split. And uh, uh oh. <laughs> all right. So that's one pick. Sunscorch got hooked on the bot side, and this is just going to completely swing the game. Beautiful crash down, furry little feet. Not picking up the kills this time. Gives both them over to Idris. Alpha Day chase on the wrong side of the rift. Elysium Dawn explode for four. Finally, 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 a team takes control of this game. Elysium Dawn. That might be the play that we look back at and think that is what won them the game. Obviously, still a lot of game to be played. And the gold lead only about 2,000, even with that four kills for nothing. But that is a massive, massive play to find. And they finally get control of this game in a big way. I was about, because I was about to say, like, yeah, that's a huge four for O. But the fact that both the solo lane towers just drop here, you got first turret. That just evens up the gold so much here from that play here, and keeps this game within that shouting distance, despite the fact that it is seven to thirteen here. Yeah, that does mean that there's a lot of standing gold though. So you'd have to think with this gold lead, they knock one down. Now they're up three thousand. They're able to get mid and top. This gold lead could really balloon a lot more, and they still have the Rift Herald as well on OP Ivy. Do lose another turret bot side though. Sunscorch will pick that one up. There's a teleport coming across. Good choppers doesn't actually grab Danny. The Sky of the Week lands one more Q. Unleashed power not available. Can't execute damage, and now he's getting free fired on. Yark with the healing, the speed ups. Can't have the shockwave do much just yet. Free Lofito will crash down with the Metal Storm and pull Yarg back in. Danny grabs the first one. Yarg soon to fall as well. One more stun will do it. A double over to the carries. Yep, they get two kills on the bot lane. They are going to lose their mid-tier turret, but I think you take those trades if you are this squad. That's kind of your turret. There's no way that they take an inhibitor turret on the back end of it. I think with the squad showing up, they should be okay. They should be okay. Uh, the one blitz There's the blitz hook. Alpha Day has to gore drinker utilizing that ultimate form, but will ultimately fall. Good Emperor's divide there from Protato, but he's stunned up on the other side of it. OP Ivy will nearly fall. Ooh. Does get a rocket to the face, but it's only a consolation prize as the kill count stacks up for Elysium Dot. Khan Solan is just over committing there way too hard to the cope play, trying to get that inhibitor. Like, yeah, we just lost two members in the bot side, but hold that thought. There's the Nature's Grasp. Idri is going to get double rooted oh, no. up. Beautiful Nature's Grasp from Sir Rizal. And now Jinx is excited. Finally, Sunscorch gets some kills. Going to try and chase down oh. Danny. Gets slowed by the blue buff and chunked out. Flash forward, twist and advance. They're trying to get Danny, but they can't get through furry little feet. Uses the blast code to create some more distance. Gets knocked back by Sir Rizal. Couple more rockets. Could oh, do it. it. The shutdown over. could go over. It's given over to Sunscorch. Now he's excited. Picks up two shutdowns. A massive gold ejection to Jinx. Oh, it's a horror, Slash. It is a horror. Is the Check worst... his gold count. Oh, God, that is the worst possible. <laughs> oh, my oh. goodness. What was that Draven Adoration? Holy moly. This is a... Okay, well, this game has been turned on its head. And suddenly, I'm slightly getting concerned for, <laughs> for this Elysium Dawn squad. Because what it looked so great before... The walking shutdown explodes in a bag of money, and uh, this is now a super fed Jinx alongside a pretty fed Azir and a pretty fed Aatrox. They don't have much of a mid lane. Oh, goodness gracious. Just immediately Mama slams Mia. an IE and a cloak, by the way. Oh, my God. Yep. Slightly concerning. Go Very figure, would you say you're concerned now? Because Elysium was still so low off of that mid lane play where they stopped the uh, two console laners. Oh, great hook. They're like, okay. yeah, let's get this, uh, oh, let's get this soul point, gamers. You know, let's go on in. Whoa. Oh, Alpha Day really right. wanted to hit that sweet spot for the healing, but he whiffs it. Danny, the Shirelli speed up keeps him safe. So Alpha Day hasn't had that Aatrox moment just yet. Yeah, uh, it's common. 
You're still two and three, not out of this game yet. Yar. Oh, oh, Yar getting picked oh. off. The Rel CC doing a lot. Nature's grass is gonna create enough of a buffer. Teleport from Danny to look for the sky of the week. It's actually OP Ivy, excuse me. Cleds immediately oh. from some scores get the slow, but can't get the spear. Good Emperor survive from Protato to keep his jig safe. And that should be enough. The sand soldiers gonna distance themselves from Elysium Dot. Ooh. That could have gotten really dicey right there. I think that could have been the counter punch that Elysium Dawn fans really wanted. But a great disengage right there. Power of the Maokai and the Azir able to keep everybody safe. They are going to pay the turret tax, it looks like, as their mid turret soon to fall. And Waffle could potentially look for another hook. So they're going to knock this one down. The hook misses. So they do get some gold injection, but they do not get a kill. They really should be. keep Waffle safe, yeah. Yep, two turrets actually. That top lane. Yeah, one and a half thousand gold lead. I, you remember when I had said I was glad that Elysium Dawn had taken the game in their hands and really made it their own game? I, I, I take that back. It is now anybody's game as both of these teams wrestle for control. Uh, keep an eye on these team fights because I think that we haven't really seen a uh, con composition that really favors their team fighting but this one definitely does when you have an azir and a jinx you want to battle in the pit and uh, i think they're looking to do so we, we, we should start to see these team fights soon as well baron's up dragon soon to come up as well so hopefully we get to see these two teams scrap it out item wise oh yarg might be oh, picked yarg. waffle knock up into the hook there's just too much cc yarg is dead the teleport oh, flank they might have idris oh. picked on the arrow the nature's grass root so you trade support for 80 carry reset. and now the fight's getting turned on its head danny has to teleport and just run away the resets on the world ender for alpha day is more than enough danny gets knocked by the zap slow but they hook sunscorched oh. in the unleashed power shut down over to waffle huge pick found from this blitzcrank op ivy now trying to go in but can't get out of potato who's doing a good job Brunting with the Sand Soldiers, Dominus Pop for OP Ivy, a ton of healing available. Waffle lands another massive hook. Protato's down now. Waffle getting as much as he can out of this Blitzcrank, and OP Ivy is allowed to free fire. Alpha Day trying to hit those Q3 big points. So many low health bars. Another oh, yeah. hook. Waffle, this guy is unstoppable on the Blitzcrank, and he's saving the game for Elysium Dawn. Support is an important role. Say it with me now, Waffle. Playing the hero right there. Alpha Day trying to chase them down. Everybody should be able to get away. And Waffle coming in clutch. Two kills, 16 assists on this Blitzcrank. It feels like nothing happens without him there. And this has been a massive, massive performance after it feels like Yark has been the support to look out for. It's been the all it's been the Waffle show. It's really funny too, because in that last fight, Elysium got four kills. And I, oh, that last fight, Elysium got five kills, and four <laughs> of them, Waffle, kind of hooked the person before they died. And that really just saved it, because initially, Idris was picked for a little feet, ends up dying as well. That could be Whoa, a Baron angle. Now, all of a sudden, no vision. They're just jumping right onto Baron Nasher. A lot of ultimates not really up just yet. Danny doing a good job to brought Nature's Grass available. So here comes Sir Rizel. Shirelli is popped. Who are they going to go for here? The Emperor's divide away for a little feet. Sir Rizel is dead. He's cut off from the rest of the squad here. A big tank down. The Baron's still going. And Waffle, he's looking for that hook angle. If he can land it onto a carry, he gets Protato. Is into the scatter of the week. They're going to burn the Azir, but he doesn't fall just yet. The healing from Yark enough. The Baron secured there for very little feet. But now at least he's done. Have to run for the hills. Out. Alpha Day has the world in her pop, trying to get onto somebody oh, with no. these cues. Oh, Can't find it. Sunscorch, though, does get a reset. There goes Alpha Day. Finally, the slice and dives from OP Ivy does get a trade. But now he's in Alpha Day's realm. Shutdowns off across the board. On the other side, though, very little feet has killed off the rest of Connie. Sports and it's Alpha Day oh, up against yeah. Idris and Furry Little Feet. Doesn't have the World Ender available anymore. Doesn't land the chain just yet. Can't get close enough to land these cues. And Elysium Dawn can take a breath. They have Baron on two. Oh my goodness, that oh, one was high. That one was close. Yeah, this is I a think you're right, Okay. I don't think they can get it. Yeah, they can't get yeah. it. They don't need to be too concerned, even if. Oh. Baron, <laughs> Baron Recall gets him out safe. Even if this one goes over to Khan Esports, I still think that they're in a good position to win this game. They obviously want to be on Soul Point, but no reason to throw all your Baron buffs away right there. They recognize that. Get the reset with all of the dead members. 
And at this point, they are up a pretty substantial amount of gold. They have themselves a Baron buff on two members. They could potentially go on soul point right here. Waffles hitting every hook in existence. This is their game to lose. I'm going to say it. I think that they can definitely lose it, but they would have to make a mistake to lose this game. I think that if they make the perfect plays, I think that they should be able to walk this one through the finish. Push waves doing so much for Elysium Dom there. They had top and bot pushing heavily, so that gives you the Baron for free there. Connie Sports opting just to shove out those waves with Baron on the cards. And they're fine giving that away. Hey, Potato's certainly pushing pretty far here. We'll take that back. And that it will at least delay some of the power of this Baron buff. The fact that if you're releasing Don, you have to answer these side lanes first. Yeah, it, it feels like right now they're not able to do so. The Ash Arrow Blind is going to miss. So this is here. Should be able to get out. And, and they're getting split right now as well. You know, you saw that. They're trying to decide, do we go after this Azir for over pushing? Do we not? How do we want to play this one out? And because of that, they burn another 30 seconds. Now, the, the Jinx has to take a, or the Ash has to take a back. And uh, they're able to shove out mid. So they shouldn't be too concerned about losing a mid turret. And realistically, this Baron buff might not get a single tower. Uh, which is a little concerning. But I, I still think that they're in a good position with this gold lead and the dragon advantage. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this Baron buff's not going to get as much as you might think. It doesn't help that it's only on two members, too. Like... Yeah, you're not gonna be able to spread it out across multiple lanes here. You can do a one three one or uh, one four zero. Oh. It's like, yeah. And now, yeah, they basically get nothing out of it. I, uh, it's soon to go down. Idri is using it just to answer mid waves. And now we get into that tricky scenario because you're really relying on Waffle to find some sort of engage, but they're oh, gonna jump cool. onto Waffle. One Umper's Divide forces Waffle's Flash down, and while he's safe, that is a very key summoner for him to set up the picks that Lee Sim Dom rely on so heavily. Yeah, just kind of needs to land them just by walking. <clears throat> Flash Hook is such an important tool to have. Will not have that. Great find right there by Protato. They're able to get that summoner off of the Blitzcrank. It also means, uh, while this Blitzcrank is building kind of tanky, it's more of a utility Blitzcrank build. And so because of that, if you're able to pick this Blitzcrank and, you know, get them in the middle of everybody, we'll just pop. Oh, Sunscorch having to cleanse, but he gets flanked on by Danny. The Jinx is down. That's so uh -oh. much of the team fight dead for Khan Esports. Protato, you know, teleports in, but then Amelia has to flash. That's both of his summers down as well. Right. He's going to try and set up a zero turret. Furry little feet does a little too far. Top side, though, Alpha Day taking a lot for it, but Yarg does end up falling. Yeah, Yarg, it's not been the best game on this Melio. I don't think this is the best we've seen out of Yarg. Protato has to be so careful. There are four members in the mid lane here. I mean, if Protato falls, I really feel like this could be the game. Waffle, what do you got for us? He's looking for the hook. Nope, guesses the wrong way. So it doesn't get Protato. Ooh, they get that tier two mid turret in Aatrox. Has Ooh, the, the flank. flank. Protato, Emperor's Divide. He's just refiring oh, onto no. Danny, but can't get a lot of damage. Flash switch advance forward. They're trying oh. to get onto Idris. They're burning him down. They have him caught, but he's not Ooh, dead just yet. Alpha Day will finally grab it with a dash, and the World Ender gets a reset. Trying to get those big sweet spots on the Qs. Gets the Q2. Try and look for the Q3. They have Danny cornered on the other side. He will fall. He trades Protato, and Alpha Day just can't get close enough to these other targets. OP Ivy has more than enough health to deal with it. Slices and dices forward. Alpha Day trying to rescue this game. Keep Khan Esports in it. And he's going to barrel down mid doing so. Yeah, hold on a second because Alpha Day is keeping them okay. in. This has been a very slow disengage, which means they haven't been able to get back. So the low health bars him. means this is an inhibitor turret. I, I don't think it's an inhib. Although with Jeeks excited passive, I take that back. They grab themselves an inhibitor. Now they can push top. They have a top wave. It's on the inhibitor chart. Waffle has to be so careful. Oh, Waffle. he's caught. For the chopper is, gets Waffle killed off. Arrow coming in. Yarg is just going to eat it. There's no re-engage. Waffle is down. Look how little Elysium Dog could do. OP oh, Ivy going to flash forward for Sunscorch. They have the Azir pick, Ooh, but the pick line. on the other side, it's an 80 carry trade. Alpha Day in the middle of everybody. He's the only damage left. Yard getting hounded by OP Ivy, but there goes Furry Little Feet. Danny shows up to the party. Good scare of the week. Alpha Day very low. Can't take a lot of magic damage, but Yard's going to try and top him off. Keep him healed. Q3, big heal. OP Ivy needs one more slice and dice. Can Danny get close enough? He flashes with a W and he'll 
grab it. Danny rescues the day as these fights go back and forth, and Protato might not stop the fight. Ooh, 20 Potato. seconds until Dragon as well. That the could dragon. be Infernal Soul, but the base broken open here by Khan. Gonna give him a lot of leeway. Might not be over yet. The Shurima shuffle on in from Potato Senpai. Gonna be eating a fatty combo in return. Oh, oh here's Waffle. 50 He's looking okay. for the hook. Oh. They gotta be careful. Potato has been looking for a scout of the week. Potato. Oh, one more leash power will do it. Danny outplays it. Rotato overextends it. Is that going to be enough for Soul to go into the hands of Elysium Dawn? It's a terrible time to die. It is just maybe the worst time to die. Trying to make a play happen, dashing into every single member. And I think that's it. I, I don't think that they can try to go for this one. Jungler just coming back up. They don't have a mid laner right now. As good as this, as this Jinx has been, as much damage as it can do, 1v5 is a little bit too tall of an order. And now the game becomes who will will the other squad their fight way. You've got Baron coming up. It is up. It feels like every team has their eyes set on it. Side lanes pushing for Khan Esports have to be answers. Alpha Day will shove that bot side up. But it's really going to become who can sort of pick who, right? Who can keep the fight in their hands? If Waffle could get a carry, it's all up for Elysium Ooh. Dawn. But if Alpha Day's allowed to run Muck in the back line, Khan Esports might just have that advantage. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on Danny as well. I, I think this uh, Syndra damage has kind of gone under the radar, but once it hits, it hits. And at this point, full splinters, it will blow up a Jinx no matter what. So you have to be concerned about where this Syndra is at all points in time. Knife's Edge. Knife's Edge. I mean... It's 32 and a half minutes in because one big goof was probably the end of the game here. I guess it is a knife sedge. You are yeah. correct. An overused phrase, but in this in this instance, incorrectly used. It could be the season, the entire season, depending on who really comes out on top in these fights. Good first setup coming across here for Elysium Dawn. They get the vision. They have the pit theirs. OPIV at least pulling Alpha Day over. Both those top laners have teleport. There's the arrow. An Ooh. immediate cleanse comes out from Sun Scorch. Um, oh well goodness. placed, because he would have been picked off from Waffle's hook. Waffle flash there. That is oh, Waffle's flash. Lane. Here we go to the bot side. Oh, here we go. OPIV has the level advantage, but not the item advantage. Dominus still going here. Alpha Day gets that Ooh. Sterax shield. The Shaheel coming through here. Sterax for OP Ivy. He's winning the battle, and it's allowing Elysium Dawn to just take this Baron. OP just Ivy just sure. delaying the inevitable. Mid wave. I mean, it's Baron Recall. Yeah. yeah. It's not like you get the inhib here because you already got the inhib. So. I mean, they could potentially you try to get, get up off there? here. Uh, yeah, it's an uncomfortable position. I just don't think they ever felt comfortable going in there. Get Baron for free on five members, and that one they might be look. They might look back on that one and, and not feel too good about that. Just don't pull the trigger, and it's gonna cost them. Yeah, it it was amazing play there. OP Ivy now sort of maybe has a grasp on that one-on-one. -on -one. He has the level advantage. Sure off a of back, he'll have the items. Only behind the items because he went for the heal cut. And now they're just NA ramming it. But that oh, might play Jesus. into Connie Sports' yeah. hands. Nature's grass. Oh, There's a big 2 3 out today. Huge heals. They get the reset. Sunscorch is excited. Waffle down. Sunscorch is safe, but Protato might not be. Has to enter the fight to keep it safe. Furry little feet getting chugged out. They just can't get to the jinx. Oh, a sack so on the injuries. He eats one more rocket. He might fall, but they can't step up far enough. Elysium Dawn playing on a complete edge here. Everybody is so low, and Sir Rizel knows it. Awesome. He's pushing up. They're looking for some slow something to go forward, Very but they can't spotted. find it. Very little feet. Does now have a flank angle Does if he wants it, this. but he's not healthy enough to go for it. This Jinx is fully online. Four oh, yeah. items. They're going for Danny. Yarg eats an arrow. Danny's so low, but Sunscorch Ooh, is going to be able to trade him out. Sir Rizel falls. They've got the Sidra. Idris eats the zap. Sunscorch is going to do it. Gets the shutdowns. Big kills. Could this be it? Could this be the title for Khan Esports? That might that be it, 
That might be it, Slayer. That might be it. I I, I think they've got the they've got the wave in the mid lane. Yeah. There's the no damage left. In. There's no damage. They all they can do is catch the waves, but they have Azir and Jinx hounding them. First Nexus turret falls. There's nothing furry little feet and waffle can do except watch their base crumble, their Nexus fall, and their season end. Con Esports, the top team all season long, takes the title in a sweeping fashion. Holy moly, you even see the objective bounty pop up there, although those were falling off. Quite the comeback here in the late game, even against the Infernal Soul that did so much damage. Elysium just misstepping a little too far there, and that lets the Jinx get resets here for Sun Scorched. Yeah, refusal to die, refusal to bend the knee. Con Esports. They do not want to give up on their season, on their title hopes, and they will be rewarded as champions. They will be knighted. Sun Scorch, by the way, on Jinx, completely changing my mind about the champion. It felt like uh, it kind of went a little quiet in the mid game. It just had to play so safe against the uh, enemy composition. But as soon as they went unchecked, as soon as they went untouched in a team fight, all it took was one rocket, one kill and uh, completely change the complexion of that last game. They get themselves to sweep the victory. Congratulations to Khan Esports A. In dominating fashion, they get themselves, what, two dominant wins and then a comeback victory. Beautiful, beautiful work. Beautiful indeed. That Jinx Smelio, that's where they come alive, right? That's why you pick it. It's because once Jinx hits three, four items, Gets powered up like you can get powered up by Glitch Energy. Thanks to you for sponsoring Blue Otter. I, mean, I had to make sure to get that one in, guys. Whoa, I, 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 I had to. I had to. Click plug, click plug. But regardless, Con Esports, uh, you know, I'm not, you could name a certain historical figure that was pretty dominating in his time around the world. Con Esports <laughs> certainly looked dominating what? this all season long here. A 3 0 sweep. It feels right, Gofrino. Yeah, yeah. Um, although, like we mentioned the last game, they have to do a little bit of a comeback in that. You were on the back foot, but it does show their mental attitude and why they deserve this numero uno spot here in the Blue Otter. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes it's not about, you know, those the, those easy stomp victories where you just kind of get a couple of easy fights and just snowball it into a win. Those are great. Don't get me wrong. And it shows your your skirmishing that your squad provides. But uh, the fact that in that last game, it went late. You know, they had a different composition. It was not an easy uh, fight. It, it felt like Waffle was doing everything in their power on the Blitzcrank to make sure that they would not take the series in three. And they were still able to find their resilience, um, you know, almost very Faker-esque. You know, it, it, against, in that game against Ellen, G, against JDG, finding the Azure ultimate, getting the midwave uh, pushed out, and then ending off of it. It's just beautifully played. And again, congratulations to Khan, everybody who plays on that club. Because um, that was a pretty dominant uh, split that we've seen out of them. I, I mean, they really did make light work out of the Diamond League. Complete light work indeed. And, well, we'll get to hear from them to get some insight here. We've got a couple members from this Khan Esports team going to be popping in here. But to set things up so we don't make alls have to do everything under the sun while live on camera, our beautiful producer. We're going to throw into one final break. On the other side, we'll hear from a couple members of this championship crowned Con Esports roster that you won't want to miss.
Welcome back for a final time, everybody. You can't see him, but we are joined by the starting jungler and support, Sir Rizel and Mr. Yarg here after their sweep of the grand finals as a champion of the Blue Otter Diamond League here. Gentlemen, I'll just ask you right off the bat here. Keep it simple. Uh, I'll throw it to you first, Mr. Rizel, and then you, Yarg. I mean, how does it feel to not only win it after how successful your regular season was, but win it in such commanding fashion? It's feeling pretty good. I'm happy we 3 0 this time. I was a little worried in the last game that I was going to ruin my 3 0. I wouldn't really feel like a win if we didn't 3 0 here, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm happy with how it went. Yark, similar feelings, my friend? Yeah, I was a bit worried when I looked at the... I hit tab at 20 minutes and my jungler was 0-7 on Maokai, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was that when After you were like that, 5 on Melio, or was that... Yeah, a yeah, but I, I can't be looking at that, you know what I mean? I gotta blame my jungler. But, yeah, it did look bad, but I was pretty confident we were gonna win because I think our mid-to-late macro is much better than any of the other teams, so... Even though we were behind, I was pretty confident we were gonna get that win. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that mid to late game macro because you didn't really get a chance to show it in the first two games. Uh, pretty dominant wins. Uh, you got to give your jungler some credit on that second one. That was a very fed Karthus. And then on the first one, I feel like you can get, give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, very, very strong Rakan games. I think both of you guys had great, great series. So I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about like your individual performances? Uh, and then how do you feel about this team's performance do you feel like this was your peak? Do you think that, you know, this is the best that you guys can get? Or do you want to try to run this back with the same squad and show that this is a dynasty, uh, you know, not just a one-time win? Yarg, I'll start with you. So I definitely would like to play with this team again. I don't know. You know, we discussed it a little bit, but we're not 100% on what we're going to do. Uh, but then for me personally, like, I think I was a lot better than the enemy support, even though he's probably, like, definitely the second best support in the league. Uh, I was messing up in the lane quite a bit, which is usually like my strength, I would say, is my laning phase. But then uh, similar to the last series we played too, once it hits like 10 minutes, I just started roaming around the map and I'm killing everybody. They were disrespecting me. Uh, I was getting every Herald uh, first move to mid lane. Like I think in the second game, their mid laner was like zero and nine or something at 20 minutes. Like, yeah, I, I was just terrorizing these guys on the rift. Mm -hmm. What about you, Sir Rizal? Similar thoughts, different sentiments? How are you feeling? Yeah, I agree. I felt like we put a lot of pressure on the enemy jungle, and he was just forced to, like, run into our jungle, and I always had Yarg to help me, and we would just kill them over and over, and they couldn't really play the game the first two games. I think... Uh, I'm unhappy with the third game, though. It, it was just too sloppy in the early game. I kind of think... We may have deserved to lose, but we pulled <laughs> we pulled it back. And I was going to ask you guys about that third game too, because it was definitely rocky. Was it just a matter of um your game plan fell apart a little just due to the hooks, or was there just a little bit of a too much early snowball that did really put you on the back foot there and give you that trouble you were talking about? I think it was my fault. I was just uh, disrespecting their early pressure and I kept trying to make stuff happen in the early game and it just resulted in like me getting my teammates killed and dying. But so I called I for that bot three v three, right? And then that is where I feel like it started to go really bad for us. Because our wave was frozen after we died too. Oh, but I, I mean I thought that. we should win the I thought we should win that three v three. Like I think we must have done something wrong. Yeah, I don't have much experience against Rel Jungle that champ seems pretty strong a bit stronger than Mao guy oh yeah in the early game oh yeah yeah that was a talking point for sure we saw the road jungle and we we're like oh that's gonna be pretty strong well i mean to be fair to both of you not i don't think a lot of people know how to account for a six and a rail jungle so i'll give you i'll give you some credit over there nonetheless uh yarg i'll direct this one at you uh because you talked about when we, you first jumped in this vc we saw a lot of unique champion picks from you guys especially in games one and two uh you break out the Ashheimer bottom lane the last couple patches that's not really what the bot lane meta has been about it, it's definitely a tone shift you had the karthus in games as well uh talk to me about how you know you're you, the, how helpful the coaching staff has been for you guys with these drafts and how you really feel like you can play those not super meta picks and still just look as dominant. 
Yeah. So I think the co our coach has helped a lot with draft. You, me and Ryan play on teams very often together. We've been playing together for like four years. And mm -hmm. uh, that we usually do draft every time. And I uh, like especially me, I usually do the scouting for all the teams we play on. And to have someone who like did that for us, especially like a challenger player who's obviously better at the game than we are. I think that helped a lot. Also, my mid and top laner are a bit for fun players. They like playing for fun champions, and he uh, he very good at telling them not to do that. And he just uh, makes Mr. Potato lock Oriana every single game. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was mainly our coach figuring that stuff out. I mean, I basically play Maokai Udir only, other than a little bit of Karthus, and I mean, the way that we just had such strong, uh, a such strong read on the meta. Like, I guess the enemy team doesn't play Cassante or something. I mean, it yeah. felt like us being able to get Cassante just made the game or the draft like unplayable for the enemy team. Yeah, I think we kind of have read. like six champs, six to eight champions that are must bans against us. So when you draft against us and you have three bans, like. I think they're they're just kind of screwed no matter yeah. what. You can see in game three they like picked away two of the champs that we wanted because they knew like if they give us Maokai Rel, the game is over. Instantly. And Ash, like yeah, and then they're our... just playing they're just playing champs that they're not as good at because they're afraid of what we're you know of our champion pools. I think we just had a big draft advantage. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it it definitely showed. Uh, my my final question before I pass it off off over to Koferino, um, would be. You know, I feel like it's hard to tell with some teams. You know, some some players look at you know ho hoisting the trophy. It's this big honor. It's a big thing. Um, you know, it, it's kind of the end goal. It's what they've wanted. You know, after enrolling in the league, other players they want to use it as a stepping stone. They're like, great, we've won the Diamond League. Time to get up to Emerald. Time to get up to Challenger, and then you know try to win those leagues. How do you guys view it? I'm curious. It, was this like kind of the culmination of all of your efforts, or do you think that there's more for you guys after this? I think there's uh, definitely more for us after mm -hmm. this. Like, I do kind of think that if we went up to the Masters League, even with like this same lineup, we would do, we would have done pretty well. Yeah, I think winning Masters League probably would be pretty rough, but uh, <laughs> I think our team is, you know, I mean, me and Ryan have played in AML last split. I definitely think like the players we have on our team are capable of doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. I would maybe consider moving this team up to the Masters League. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have any questions myself, um, unless if Slayer has any. Uh, I, you know, I, I have been, I have been passed down a question from from the higher ups here. Uh, <laughs> I've been, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it for verbatim. Um, I've asked both of you gentlemen, what do you think of quotation marks, the bully that I've, I've been asked to ask you both that, Whoa. oh, the, the, you know, the bully, the guy, our oh, boss, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Mr. Yeah. Bully. Oh, Mr. He's bully. incredible yeah. admin, the best <laughs> admin I've ever seen. I think I agree. Always updates the stats on time every single week. Perfectly. Like it's just <laughs> amazing. Honestly. What are your Actually, thoughts? I bet on the Coachify. stats are up right now on oh Coachify. God. Oh yeah, they're really good too. Or actually, you know what? I do have a bit of a gripe with Coachify. Oh no, uh, that is my cut oh, is my cut is my cut is my. Oh whoa, that's our sponsor. Coachify I'm just saying, they, Coach lead, Cupcake Alex. isn't on there, bro. They got to get my boy Coach Cupcake on there. He'll show you how okay. a real support plays the game. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Well, all the fun aside here, uh, gentlemen. I, I, I know you know these interviews don't always happen. Uh, few and far between if they ever happen. So I, I'd like to give you both, you know, the stage as the champions of the season 10 Blue Otter Diamond League. Shout out whoever you'd like to shout out. Mr. Uh, Mr. Yarg, you can go first and rise out. The stage is yours, gentlemen. Yeah, I'll just shout out like our org, uh, Mr. Absar, for taking us in. Uh, my Both of my coaches, Mr. Moz, for controlling our monkey brains. And then also Coach Cupcake, of course, for allowing me to gap every support in the league. And I'll shout out my teammates. Thanks, everyone. I don't think we would have won it if we didn't work together as well as we did. And then thank you, Moz, for helping us fix, like, 90% of our issues and improve a lot 
in uh, the mid game and early game. Beautiful. Love okay. shouting out the coaching staffs. Love seeing and hearing from such a dominant duo, a part of a dominant Con Esports roster that has now captured glory in the Blue Otter Diamond League. Folks, that will do it for the Blue Otter Diamond League this season, our broadcast tonight. Once again, congratulations. Con Esports, a 3-0 win over Elysium Dawn. That, if I'm not wrong, might do it for almost every Blue Otter broadcast this season in 2023. It's been a pleasure being going to be alongside Go Farino. Okay, Platinum's still going. Most of the league. So you'll have to look forward to Blue Otter Platinum when it closes out next week. But from at least myself, Go Farino and Bonfire, this is likely some of our, if not our, at least my potential last league broadcast of the year. It's been a pleasure being able to cover the Blue Otter League with, every, with you guys, bring it to you weekly. But this is the end of the road. Look forward to 2024 for new beginnings. And until then, enjoy your holidays, however you celebrate them. And we'll see you guys for a brand new year of Blue Otter and League of Legends action. Until then, take care.